straight game. The Cowboys have returned to playoff prominence. They were 11 and 5 a year ago, and only three years before that, they were a 1 and 15 team. They have really turned it around. The Washington Redskins, you know about them, you know them well. They beat, of course, Buffalo in the Super Bowl 26, 37, 24. They're stronger, if anything, Al Michaels. Uh, they're solid in management. They have great coaching, but as, after they lost that final preseason game to Minnesota, 30 to nothing, you get the feeling there are a lot of concern because they played the regulars right into the fourth quarter. And Frank, they also play in very clearly the toughest division in the National mm -hmm. Football League, the NFC East. So you can make a case, even though it's a long season, for the four most important games on the Redskins schedule this year, the two against Philadelphia and the two against Dallas, including, of course, the one tonight. Another reason is significant tonight for Washington. They were not only bad, as Frank said, during preseason, but abysmal against Minnesota. If they win tonight, then the preseason becomes what it should be, meaningless ancient history. If they lose tonight, then you go home and you go, is something wrong here? Is there a bigger problem? So a big game, even though it's opening night for the Skins against the Dallas team, Dan, two years ago, they win one, then they win seven, then they win 11. What next? What's next? Well, to listen to Jimmy Johnson and the folks who live here in Dallas, it's nothing less than an appearance in the National Football Conference championship game. Lofty goals, but no team in the league has their star rising quite as quickly as this Dallas Cowboys squad. Now, Jimmy Johnson is the first to say, this is a better team now than I had here a year ago. But a reality check is here tonight in the form of the defending Super Bowl champion Redskins. But watch out. If by chance Dallas should win this game tonight, then I guess a lot of people will say about America's team, rightfully so, Texas Stadium is a bad place to be if you're another club in the NFL. And it is the only place to be in the Metroplex tonight because a crowd of 65,000 looks on in a much anticipated game. This area talking about the game since the day the schedule was announced. Here we go. Washington and Dallas with Chip Lowe Miller kicking off for the Redskins. And Lowe Miller booms one into the end zone and it is down there by Alexander Wright. The Cowboys will begin their first drive of the season from the 20. Troy Aikman, who has now developed into one of the premier quarterbacks in the National Football League. A lot of people think shortly he will be the best. Fully recovered from a knee injury sustained late last year. Emmett Smith is terrific. Led the league in rushing. Johnston is the blocker and sometime receiver. Martin and Harper start as the wide outs and Novacek the tight end. Michael Irvin has signed. We will see him. Two and a Newton. Cornish is in the middle. Gisick and Williams. The guy they're missing, Mark Stepnoski, their top center, just signed, but not in uniform. They might have him back next week against the Giants. Aikman to Smith, and we'll see this a lot tonight as Emmett moves to the left side and is out of bounds at the 24-yard line, and a late flag is thrown after a four-yard gain. So a penalty at the outset. The referee tonight is Dick Hantack, and that four-yard gain will be negated on a holding call against Johnson's Cowboys. So Hantack getting the call from the head linesman who threw the flag, Terry Gerke. Holding, offense, number 83, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. That's Kelvin Martin, who had a great camp and thus got the start tonight. Man, Wilson, Johnson, and Stokes up front, a three-man linebacking core of Marshall Govea for the retired Millen and Andre Collins. And three of those guys were Plan B guys, Mayu Copeland and Edwards. Green, of course, is the perennial All-Pro. The crowd responds because here's Michael Irvin. Not in on the first play, but in on the second. It is first and 19 from the 11. And Aikman on first down, throwing incomplete, intended for Alvin Harper, the tall second-year wide receiver out of Tennessee, covered by Mayu. It'll be second down and 19. Good coverage by Washington. Gavea, a very active middle linebacker, was back into the coverage and forced Aikman to throw over his coverage, and he underthrew Irvin. Irvin has only practiced a couple of days. It'll be interesting to see how he holds up. But again, it was 94 degrees just prior to kickoff outside and warmer now in the field. And this stadium is very still. There is no air movement. 
through the middle. Emmett Smith, he gets to the 14. It will be third down and 16. Bobby Wilson makes the tackle. Wilson and Tim Johnson starting as the tackles. Eric Williams, who would be a starter for the Redskins, is hurt. He's on injured reserve, and they'll get him back in early October. I don't think it's going to be any secret that Emmett Smith, their number 22, is the man the Redskins feel has beaten them when they have lost to the Cowboys. So with Urban and Novacek, the two leading receivers for Dallas, being late arriving, you, if you're Washington, you think that the Dallas passing game is a little off in their timing. If that's the case, you do everything you can do to take Emmett Smith out of the ball game, reduce his effectiveness, force Dallas to win by throwing. Third and 16 with Smith out, and Johnston staying in to block, and good protection for Aikman, but the secondary does a great job, and Aikman is forced out of bounds up at the 24-yard line, and Dallas will have to kick. Monty Coleman with the tackle. Aikman wanted to deliver the ball, and he had nowhere to put it, or he would have tried to get rid of the football because he knew he was not going to be able to pick up the yardage running the football. Monty Coleman drops back into the coverage. A good pass defender for Washington. He has his eye on Aikman right here, and he has great speed. Times it out. No way Aikman's going to get the first, and they bring out the punting unit. Al, you call it, though. That's a real confidence builder for the Dallas offensive line. That was tremendous pass mm -hmm. defense. Mike Saxon quietly does the job year after year. One of the better kickers in the league facing one of the better punt returners in the league and Brian Mitchell. Mitchell backs up, fields at his 24-yard line and comes out to the 34 and a marker is down. Pelestre makes the tackle. And we'll get the call from Hantak again after a 52-yard kick and a 10-yard run back. Penalty is against the Redskins. Holding on the return, number 20, penalized 10 yards from the spot of the infraction. First down. Al Void Mays, and so Joe Gibbs looks on as his offense takes over at the 20-yard line. Mark Rippon came into his own last year. Tremendous talent. They waited and waited, and then he put it all together and was the Super Bowl MVP. Viner, the terrific running back. Sanders, Clark, Monk, the posse is back with Warren, the tight end. Lachey, as good as they get at left tackle. Mackenzie, Bosick, Schlereth went to the Pro Bowl. And the venerable Joe Jacoby, the offensive front. Rippon with the crowd cascading boos. And he pays the price as he gets sacked by Vincent Smith at the eight-yard line. The Cowboys did not have one linebacker sack all of last season, and they start this season with a linebacker sack. I think you saw Mark Rippon trying to change the play, change the formation or something at the line of scrimmage. He was doing it with a signal because he could not get the message out vocally because of the crowd noise. Well, the Redskins are going with a no-huddle offense. This is no surprise. They've been working on it and getting it ready for Dallas. Mark Rippon is calling the plays at the line of scrimmage. They did not go back to the huddle, and he's getting precious little cooperation, as you can hear, from the Dallas crowd. Second and 21, Charles Haley, the newest Cowboy, number 94. And that's Finer tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Jimmy Jones. So a most auspicious beginning for a defensive unit that is suspect. Tolbert, Jones, Newman, and Jeffcoat, they are missing Russell Maryland and Tony Casillas, the two tackles. Smith, who had the sack. Robert Jones is a rookie. He starts in the middle. Norton on the outside. Then Holton Brown at the corners. Washington and Horton are the safeties. Again, the no-huddle offense, as Dan pointed out, and you have to communicate even though you don't huddle it, it's very difficult, particularly down near the corner of that end zone where the crowd is so noisy. Third and 24 at the six with Monk in motion. And rip and throw is low, intended for Biner. And so the Dallas defense, and the Dallas defense will probably dictate in the long run the ultimate success or lack thereof for this team this year, and they couldn't have a better first series. No, you're right, Al. They will move the ball offensively. They did it a lot last year. Defensively, they weren't the strongest team in the league. All right, let's take a look. There is Charles Haley, the acquisition from the 49ers, working against a great player in Jim Lachey, and Lachey was blocked off by his own man, and Haley very nearly became a factor in the play. Kelly Goodburn sets up at the back of the end zone, feels the high snap, and the kick is blocked out of the end zone. It's 2-0 Dallas. Isaac Holt with the block. His fourth 
career block punt. Isaac Holt who somehow gets it done. He's not orthodox to say the least. But he has great quickness. And the cornerback who is under tremendous pressure here in Dallas because of the number one draft pick, Kevin Smith, the cornerback, makes the play. Watch number 30. Green start for Dallas. Dallas says the Redskins regroup the offensive line. Kelly Goodburn with the free kick now from the 20-yard line, and he really booms it. What a beauty. At the 13-yard line, Alexander Wright leapfrogs his way out to the 36, and we have two flags on the play. All right, let's take a look at the block punt. Understand, look on the left here. Two, three, four, five. That's the overload side because there are only four guys on the right. So Goodburn, the kicker, is taught to kick it towards the right. But watch the poor blocking over here that allows Holt Holding to come up field. On return, number 34, 10 yards penalty. First down. But Goodburn turns and kicks away from the overload, but he wasn't expecting such poor blocking to his right side. You got to take more out of Isaac Holt. That's Johnny Thomas just yep. taking his shoulder, and Isaac Holt is too quick for that. You have got to, if you're kicking right into that area. Frank, as you well know, you have to break his stride. You have to make him come to a stop and start over. If you're going to give the end man a free run, he'll get it. Particularly in your own end zone because you're playing much tighter to avoid just what happened. Coverage is of secondary importance. Exactly. Blocking for your punter is primary. Penalty was on Tommy Agee for holding, moving Dallas back to a 16, and Troy Aikman goes to the air, and the pass is incomplete as he throws into traffic intended for the second tight end, Alfredo Roberts. He and Jay Novacek both in in the two tight end set. Kirk Govea got a hand on it, second down. The timing of the Dallas passing game, as I mentioned, you really have to wonder with their two number one guys coming in so late. Aikman was here from the beginning, was faxing the training camp pages daily to this guy, Jay Novacek, hoping that Novacek could work out with Neil Lomax back in Phoenix, but that's not the same. Second and ten. Emmett Smith picking and threading his way for a minimal gain if one thing is critical offensively for dallas though tonight it's to keep emmett smith absolutely a thousand percent healthy because when it comes to backups he doesn't have any curvin <laughs> richards is the only guy behind him and richards has a lacerated kidney he could play in a pinch the blocking over at the point of attack number 84 novichuk we talked about him a moment ago he is a fine receiving tight end, but he does not have the stature nor the size to really blow somebody out of there, particularly the Redskins, Wilbur Marshall. You saw a lot of Dallas people throwing themselves at the Redskins, and the Redskins not giving any ground. Third and eight from the 18-yard line. Aikman with a lot of poise. Hits Johnston, seeks the first down, and gets it. Knew exactly where he had to go. Lunged forward, stopped by Mays. First down, Dallas for the unheralded Darrell Johnston, who doesn't carry much, but blocks well, and he'll catch the ball out of the backfield. He reminds me of a Brad Muster-type fullback. I mean, he's 236 pounds, but with the soft hands, and he's a valuable asset to a quarterback. And a good nose for the flag and where the first down was. And if the team needed a first down, that was, uh, that was a key pickup for Aikman and the Cowboys. Not much on first and second, converting on third and long. Five minutes into the game, 2-0 Cowboys. Emmett Smith is a nice block from Johnston and then picks his way up to the 34-yard line, turning next to nothing into about a six-yard pickup stop by Brad Edwards. That was a great block by <laughs> Daryl Johnston. He really plowed into Fred Stokes. And he just took him right off his feet. And you have somebody as quick as Emma Smith. He is going to make the quick move off. Look at that block. Smith with a step inside, breaks it to the outside, and gets a quick seven yards out of it. It's actually the second time Dallas has run this play where Johnston has picked off the end guy on the line. And in both instances, it was Fred Stokes. Much to Stokes' dismay because the first one looked just like that as well. Smith gets to the 35-yard line. He's about two yards short of the first down. Kurt Gouveia 
in on the tackle. So third and short yardage coming up for the Cowboys. And that was a huge tackle by Gavea. He hit Emmett Thomas, Emmett Smith rather, and you got the impression that if he wouldn't have had Smith, Smith was off. And how many times have we seen Smith kind of slide through those types of tackles? He runs so low as a low center of gravity, and you're right, Dan, this is a perfectly, it's a textbook tackle is what it is. He has a head up, shoulder right into the crotch, and down goes Smith short of the first. And Gouveia was alone. Third and a short two at the 35-yard line with Novacek in motion, and Aikman's going to throw for it and get to hit Novacek, and Novacek, after being bounced back, thrust forward again, first down at the 38-yard line. Hit first by Mayu, and then finally tackled by Gouveia. Novacek, such a key part of this offense, 59 receptions in each of the last two years. He is really when he comes in motion like that or goes to a wideout, he is like a wideout. He is big at 6'4 and 231, but he can run when he gets the football. Good soft hands, fine receiving tight end. And that is the type of play, guys, that you might expect to see him cough up the ball without a training camp. I mean, that's a Jimmy Johnson has to be excited to see Novacek pull that off. From the 39-yard line, Aikman throws. The pass is too high up at the 50-yard line intended for Alvin Harper. He's covered by Martin Mayhew. Second and 10 with 7.42 to go in the first quarter. And the Cowboys on top, 2-0. Jimmy Johnson came here in 1989 amidst, of course, a lot of fuss. Tom Landry gone when Jerry Jones buys the team. The Cowboys had him 3-13 and in Landry's last season. New organization, top to bottom. They begin rather ingloriously, you might say, <laughs> one in 15. And right now they're talking about a Super Bowl. The one game they won was yeah. Washington again. Yeah. Yeah. Amazingly. At RFK. Second and 10. Again, good protection. The pass is caught by Irvin up at the 43-yard line of the Redskins. A few moments ago, you saw Mayhew play very tight against Alvin Harper. This was Michael Irvin. He of the nine receptions and 131 yards in last November's win over the Redskins in RFK Stadium. You just respect this kind of talent. Not great speed, but enough to make you back off, as Mayhew did. He turned right inside the linebacker, found the opening. Aikman was right in there. You saw, you saw Michael Irvin actually lose his balance, almost stumble to the turf and yet regain his concentration in the blink of an eye and, and catch the ball. On first down, here's Smith. He gets four. So this drive, which began at the 16-yard line after a penalty on a run back, has advanced to the Washington 39 with 6.45 to go in the opening quarter. Collins made the last tackle. Talked about how effective Irvin was against Washington last year. Well, Emmett Smith had over 240 yards rushing in the two games, and for some reason, the Cowboys just seemingly have the Washington defense's number. They've been able to move the football. They've been able to do pretty much what they wanted to do when other teams couldn't. They put up some amazing numbers when you consider how tough Washington was defensively against other teams last year. You saw Richie Pettibone as his defense now is in there for the 10th play on this drive. Second and six. And Aikman, a short drop, throws. That's another first down. Alvin Harper wrestled back from the 30, and here comes a late flag. I believe the flag is on Brad Edwards, who came in late. Edwards came in and put his right shoulder. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness on the defense. Number 27. We were told early in the year that one of the things the NFL was going to watch was protecting a receiver. Watch the right of your screen. There comes Edwards in as Harper was held up and really just in a very vulnerable position and you can't argue with that call whatsoever. Every training camp was visited by the NFL officials and told one of the things we're going to really hone in on are defensive backs taking unnecessary shots at exposed receivers. Double tight end set with Roberts now in motion. First down at the 14. Emmett Smith gets knocked backwards by Brad Edwards coming up from the safety spot at the 12, second and eight. 
And here we have the Cowboys on the verge of moving inside the Redskin 10 yard line. And remember, their first two offensive plays gained one yard. And then they picked up the first down on that release pass to Daryl Johnston. And look how this drive has continued. A drive on which they have now marched 73 yards in six and a half minutes. Five minutes to go, opening quarter, 2 0 Dallas. Second and seven at the 11. Emmett Smith. He takes it to the five yard line. He's a little short of the first down. Charles Mann with the tackle. It'll be third and one. Dallas, as they did last November, able to move the ball on the ground. The one member of the cast not in there defensively for Washington is Eric Williams, so tough against the run. There is Smith again. He just dances, looks for the spot, and just explodes with great acceleration. Well, awesome blocking up front by Gizek, Cornish, and Newton. They just blew Tim Johnson and Bobby Wilson off the line. Great blocking by the Cowboy offensive line. Smith through his short career enjoying banner days against Washington. Third and one from the five. Emmett Smith again picking his way through for a first down and a touchdown. I think back to a Dallas Cowboy offensive line that gave up 11 sacks to the Eagles last year. And so far in this game, they are dominating. I mean dominating the line of scrimmage. And you do not arm tackle this man. Green Redskins had a shot at him. You don't catch him. You have got to hit him. And he is a difficult target indeed. And we better factor Jay Novacek into that blocking on that play as well. He was at the point of attack. And boy, that was just crisp. Lynn Elliott, a rookie who's won the place-kicking job, boots it through, and they could not have conceivably scripted a better open to the season as the Cowboys take a 9 to nothing lead. football for more than half of the first quarter 357 remaining opening period in Dallas nine nothing Cowboys season of Monday night football Al Michaels Frank Gifford Dan Deardorff Texas Stadium Irving Texas Redskins have the ball Dallas leads nine nothing 357 to go in the quarter and on first down Ernest Finer from the 20 up to the 23 yard line where he's tackled by Ken Norton Jr. After a pickup of three, second down and seven. Russell Maryland has a dislocated toe. He was the first pick in the 1991 draft, a great defensive tackle. So he's out tonight. And Tony Casillas is standing next to him. Casillas with a sprained knee could play in a pinch, but they'd like to keep him out tonight. And then you factor in that there's a rookie at middle linebacker. A lot of change up the middle. Second and seven. It's a dump off to Biner. And with a nice move, Biner turns it back upfield. And after getting the first down, we've got a flag coming in. I think they're going to flag Mark Schlereth for a late hit. He came along and picked off Larry Brown well after the play was over. And that's one they didn't need. Schlereth way late. Whistle had blown, and he's still unloaded. Boy, it's helmet to helmet, too. Brown, 182. Schlereth, 283. And uh, Mark put the extra 101 right on Larry Brown's head. <laughs> Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 69. Repeat the down, second down. Oh, that really hurts. That takes away a first down out over the 30-yard line. There's Larry Brown, number 24. Watch this. Moments later. Hello. Hello. I weigh 100 more than you. But more than that, if the Redskins had any idea of going back to their yep. no-huddle offense, it's very difficult down this close to the goal line close to the crowd because the crowd will really get into it you saw it earlier and so far in this series they have decided not to go with the no huddle offense instead of a first down it is second down and 15 from the 15 Rippin hits Biner but the coverage is there and he is tackled by Ken Norton and Robert Jones Jones 55 
one of two first round draft choices a rookie from East Carolina the other first round pick Kevin Smith who eventually will be a starting cornerback for them but he's been stymied with injuries in camp well there's a lot of pressure on Robert Jones too, playing against the Washington Redskins with all their moves the formations he has to be the man who keys on it and he's playing without the two starters Maryland and Casillas that we just talked about in front of him and the middle linebacker in a 4-3 depends so much on those defensive tackles right in front of him. Third and 13, crowd not making it easy for Rippin in the skins. Rippin setting up in the pocket and the throw is incomplete intended for Biner over the middle. So the penalty is costly. Instead of keeping that drive moving, the Redskins, it turns out, go three and out and Kelly Goodburn into punt again. Was that ball deflected or yeah. did it just slip out of Rippin's hands? I'm not that sure, is. but it was ugly. Biner might have given him a different move, but that was ugly. I think he's discussing with Biner now. Biner gave him a move to his right when he was not expecting it. Kelly Goodburn to kick. Kelvin Martin back to receive. Not a good kick, a short one. Bouncing at the 49, but it does take a very good Redskin bounce. Oh. Big break for Goodburn. Instead of it being about a 36-yard kick, it's dead at the 24-yard line, and it's a 59-yard kick. Dallas up 9-0, 2.03 to go in the quarter, and now it's time for our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. A look behind the scenes as sports and science converge, brought to you by AT&T. Mountain bike racing places athletes and their bikes on the brink of disaster. Handling can be difficult when the bike spends so much time in the air. A mountain bike with a full suspension system helps keep the wheels on the ground. Computer designed, the front and rear shocks absorb the heaviest impact of the rough terrain, giving the rider a more relaxed, comfortable, and controlled ride. In our universe, there is always the unknown, the unpredictable. All we can do is prepare for it. AT&T is now installing Fast Star. It can detect a cable cut instantly, so 800 calls can get back in minutes instead of hours. We can send filers for any occasion, anywhere, but only if our 800 service is up and running. Our 800 service isn't just a phone line, it's a lifeline. I miss you. AT&T has the most reliable 800 service, period. AT&T, call us. For those of you who have a certain image of minivans, Nissan introduces the Quest. It has a V6 engine, so it's more powerful, and front wheel drive, so it's more nimble and agile than you'd expect a minivan to be. After all, just because you have kids doesn't mean you have to drive a bus. The new seven-passenger Nissan Quest. It's time to expect more from a minivan. Smith, the number one pick for the Cowboys in 1990, uh, a routine start in his first start against Washington that year, but then a great game in game two. Last year on a Monday night in that third game, those 11 carries for 112 yards, and he got sick in the second quarter and played sparingly after that, and then a huge day at RFK in November. I wonder what he would have done if he hadn't got sick mm -hmm. in our Monday night game, yeah. but he had 112 yards, he only played half of it, had a 75-yard touchdown run. He got sick after he had run uh, for that touchdown, and uh, he makes uh, <laughs> the Redskins pretty sick every time he touches the football, and he has thus far tonight, as it's 9 to nothing Dallas from the 24-yard line, and Troy Aikman escapes man, and then a oh! pass is not made, or oh. is it yes, at the 46-yard yeah. line by Alvin Harper. Get back, Jeff. Oh. <laughs> Harper, who is a 7-2 high jumper, Shows you some leaping skills there. Whoa. He one hands this. This is awesome. You don't see many of those in a year. Get He's got to bring the other foot down. <laughs> Get out the highlight Ooh. film. Yeah. <laughs> and clearly inbounds with possession. <laughs> Up at the 46. Here's Emmett Smith in the Redskin territory. He takes it to the 46. And the Redskins continue to play as if it's preseason. Remember Harper? He caught that Hail Mary against the Redskins last November. If you don't mind, we're just going to show this every other play. <laughs> That's just too good to be true. 
at the concentration because he had to know that he was going to be coming down very close out of bounds still focuses on the ball flips it back in protects it when he goes down that's pretty remarkable frank concentration athleticism style grace beauty you name it it was all in that catch second and three at the 46 yard line and emmett smith behind johnston again and look out he gets a ride by fred stokes from the 46 back to the 49 yard line it'll be third down and three at the 46 yard line 35 seconds remaining in the opening quarter next week we will be in cleveland Browns licking their wounds after the thrashing yesterday by Indianapolis against the Dolphins. And because of the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew, the Dolphins had their game postponed, what would have been their opener against New England. So they open next Monday at Cleveland. Third down and three, and a quarter dominated by Dallas. And Aikman, well, he saw the play clock go down to one, and so he has to waste a timeout. And that's a smart call by Troy because he didn't want to put himself into a third and long situation. It's early in the season and sometimes there's a time lapse in getting that play onto the field, transmitting it through the quarterback to the rest of the offensive huddle. Here's a good look at the fourth year man out of UCLA, the first round pick in 89, the franchise player hopefully to be a big question mark can he stay healthy he has been troubled by injuries in each and every year going out the 12th game of last year unfortunately Steve Berline is a great backup quarterback he came on to win the final four games and Aikman as Al pointed out earlier no problems with the knee that he injured against the Washington Redskins last November I it's it's premature to say in the first quarter that we've reached a critical juncture of the ball game but it would do the Redskins a whole lot of good if they could hold defensively here and force the Cowboys to punt the football. I mean, Mark Rippon and his squad don't need to be any farther in the hole than they are right now. And this would be an opportune time for the Redskins to arch their back a bit and hold. Third and three, 11 seconds to go in the first quarter. Nine nothing, Cowboys. complete intended for Martin and he was covered by A.J. Johnson and so as Dan suggested it would be propitious for Washington to hold and they do and they will get the ball on what might be the final play of the first quarter. Daryl Green drops back to receive the kick. Mike Saxon will set up at his own 40 yard line. And I think Green's back there for his decision making ability. In all probability, this is a kick that will not be returned. And so Daryl Green's the guy who went back there making the call whether or not to field it, fair catch it, say, anywhere around the 10 yard line. He's also a great guy to have back there if they're thinking yeah. about a fake. On fourth and three, Saxon lofting it just barely into the end zone, bouncing about two yards in. And the first quarter has expired. A memorable one for the Dallas Cowboys. They did just about everything right. They lead it by a score of nine to nothing and will return to Irving, Texas for Monday Night Football after this message and a word from our ABC station. The new Nissan 240SX convertible comes equipped with an automatic, double insulated, incredibly durable cloth top that will probably never see the light of day. They're tiny portraits of a people. They sing of our heroes and celebrate our homeland. ABC. 
Mitsubishi believes that a luxury car should offer something beyond the usual luxuries. It may be extraordinary power and control, a consummate blend of comfort and performance, or a state-of-the-art four-wheel drive system. The 3000 GT, the Diamante, the Montero. Lease the luxury car of your choice. Only $3.99 a month for 36 months. Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. Good evening. We'll have the forecast for the week ahead after the game. Three key guys were in your picture there. Jones and Noonan, the two backup tackles, and the other Jones, the rookie middle linebacker. They've done the job thus far. First down, Washington from... The 20-yard line as we start the second quarter. Ricky Irvin is the new running back. Play clock is down to four. Rippin with a short drop, a wobbly pass, and Clark makes the catch, and Larry Brown says hello. Well, you really can't fault the decision on the part of Rippin. He saw the single coverage of Larry Brown on Gary Clark, read it correctly, made the change, and it was a superb play by Larry Brown. To the bucket. That is not a mistake. Minus yardage for the Washington Redskins. Unthinkable. Second and six up at the 24-yard line. Here's Irvin with a big hole, and Ricky maintains his balance long enough to pick up a first down up to the 31-yard line. Vincent Smith cuts him down, and Ricky Irvin is a guy who really came on in the second half last season for Washington, and he will complement Biner beautifully in what figures to be a very tough Redskin running attack. And he will be the one they will be using a lot in short yardage, where they used to use Gerald Riggs. They let him go. 11 touchdowns for Riggs a year ago. And I think one of the things that, one of the questions that will have to be answered over the course of the year, will they need that big man for the short yardage? For Ben Irvin to it. That was their first first down. And here's Irvin into three Cowboys at the 30-yard line, led by Jimmy Jones, number 97. And Tony Tolbert is also there. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? 13-20 left, first half. Cowboys nine, Redskins nothing. And if you were wondering, as I was a while ago, and I asked the guys down in the truck, when was the last time the Skins were down by nine points? Last year against Phoenix, they were down by 14. They came back to win that one. Well, I mentioned how the, made me feel better, Dallas offensive line was controlling the line of scrimmage. Right now, their defensive line is coming doggone close to doing it. Second and 12, and Irvin gets tackled from behind. Nice play by Danny Noonan to stop him in his tracks after a minimal game. I mean, now if any team in the league could suffer some losses at defensive tackle, the Cowboys are one of the teams that could do it. Noonan was close to being on the tra trading block and maybe playing with someone else before Maryland got hurt. Then Casillas got hurt. But keep in mind that Jimmy Jones and Noonan have both logged a lot of playing time for the Cowboys. They are deep in defensive linemen, plus the recent addition of Haley. Third and ten at the 32-yard line. They stack receivers on the left side, and then Rippon throws deep down the middle to the 46-yard line, and it's incomplete. Ricky Sanders... In traffic, couldn't hold on. And what a great pass rush by Charles Haley, who takes the inside rush, splits a couple of Redskins, and smothers Rippon. Remember, this is one of the great pass rushers. He's to the top. Watch the loop to the inside. He splits McKenzie and Lachey and gets in there and disrupts Rippon. What a wonderful addition for the Dallas Cowboys, Charles Haley. How many times have we seen him do that in that other uniform? Oh. Here's Goodburn's kick, and this is a boomer, and Martin backs up and fields it at the 14-yard line, eludes two Redskins, then a third, and is finally tripped up at the 23-yard line. The Cowboys have it again as they continue to dominate. 12.02 left first half. 9-0 Dallas. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. 
Ask them about quality. It's one of the biggest reasons five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are Fords. The F-Series Pickup, Taurus, Explorer, Escort, and Ranger. Five out of ten of the country's best sellers. It's quality that breeds success. Have you driven a Ford lately? It's more than just a question. It's an answer. Honey, you know that little package they delivered this morning? Did you put it somewhere? Federal Express knows how it feels when you have to locate your package. Mommy needs it for a meeting. That's why Federal Express has a tracking system that can tell you where your package is. How about giving Mommy a hint? Of course, once it gets there, you're on your own. <laughs> Federal Express. Henry, where are my keys? Our most important package is yours. Sweet dreams, baby. Camper. A financial services company. Sweet dreams tonight. Kemper. Asset management, brokerage, and insurance. Every baby needs a blanket to help them dream at night. For growth, for protection. The companies of Kemper Corporation. We're making dreams come true. Sweet dreams, baby. Program note on Saturday, Michael Jordan, the, the golfer of renown, along with the sports stars and Hollywood stars in the RMCC Celebrity Golf Championship at the times that were reflected there. Then college football, regional action. You'll see Texas against Syracuse or Tennessee against Georgia or Oregon Stanford out west. Missouri takes on Illinois. And uh, some of you in the Midwest will see Dan and Bo Schembechler calling the game from Columbus between Bowling Green and Ohio State this Saturday. Here on first down, Emmett Smith reversing field, up past the 35, finally tackled at the 43-yard line, dragged down by Andre Collins. And if you follow the Redskins, you will say thank you, Andre Collins. <laughs> That's just individual run right. on the part of Emmett Smith. Nothing doing on the left side. The Redskins, good pursuit. Smith reads it, nowhere to go here, breaks it off, knows he can't get to the outside, played very well there by Wilbur Marshall, breaks it back to the inside and sort of skips, slides, low center of gravity, and Collins makes a major save. And look at the Cowboys get back up and block for Smith. Right now, Dallas is out hustling Washington on both sides of the ball. First and 10 from the 43, Irving, did he have it? No, he didn't at the 49-yard line. Came in and out, never had possession, covered by Martin Mayhew second down uh, that's a great play by the part of Mayhew I think he just pulled it out of there Irvin thought he had it and realized he didn't want it considering Washington would have got it but Mayhew good tight coverage wraps those arms around pulls him down out comes the ball got to have both feet on the ground with possession and you can see the ball comes out before Irvin gets his second foot on the ground well that's superb play by the yeah. corner and good officiating ruling that an incomplete pass Second and ten at the 43. Aikman under some pressure. Throws to Johnston. He slips a tackle. And Darrell Johnston takes off for a first down to the 40-yard line. How did Johnston catch that ball? That thing was thrown behind him. It looked like it had Velcro on it and stuck to his hip. Danny Copeland made the play for the interception. And that gave Johnston the open field. Almost looked like Copeland might have bumped the ball. I, look at this here to the left. There's Copeland going for the interception. <laughs> Somehow, rather, Johnson pulls it in and rumbles for a first inside the 40. And he got a good block downfield by Jay Novacek. I mean, the Cowboys are flying all over the field, throwing themselves at these Redskins. Yard gain ball at the 39, and Aikman again comes up too late. Looks at the play clock, it goes down to one, and Dallas has to use a second timeout. That's about the only thing they've done wrong tonight. Otherwise, it's been all oh, big D. Nice Jimmy says, My fault. I'm Stan Galt from Goodyear. You're not seeing the usual great aerial photography from the Goodyear blimp tonight because we sent the blimp to help in the hurricane relief effort in Florida. The Goodyear blimp with its night sign can be used for critical communications with the workers and victims of Hurricane Andrew. The power is out in Florida, 
But the real power is in all of our hands. Please join Goodyear Associates throughout the country and help in any way you can. We've got a bit of an edge with the driver we have. We've got the best driver out there. So it's, it's a matter of, of the mechanics just not overlooking anything. Al and I stay in, uh, stay in constant uh, communication uh, during the race. Uh, I have to be aware of what he wants or needs you know, at all times. I think the small details are the, uh, is what makes the difference between winning and running second. A new job, a new apartment, and a new Escort GT. <laughs> Let's freeze this moment in time. Introducing the new 93 quality line of Ford Escorts. The woman of my dreams came with a kid and a dog. Lucky for me, I got a new Escort wagon. With three women in the house, it's impossible to agree on anything except our new Escort sedan. No wonder Escort's the best-selling small car in America. Don't you think it's time you discovered why? Have you driven a Ford lately? It's a duel between top guns. Dan Marino leads the Miami Dolphins into Cleveland to meet Bernie Kosar and the Browns. Next week on ABC's Monday Night Football. Mark Stepnoski was the last of the Cowboys to come to terms over the weekend, but uh, not early enough for him to play tonight. So uh, he is roster exempt. Frank Cornish, who was a plan B pickup from San Diego, and who was Aikman's center at UCLA, spells him, and he's been doing a great job tonight. At the 39-yard line, Aikman throws, open man, and dropping it at the 21-yard line is Urban. He was almost too open. Oh, boy, when you miss all of training camp, and you come in and do that in front of the hometown folks. And you just patted the bankroll enormously. Well, he didn't get the booze, but he better not do it again. Lined up against Daryl Green, and they've had some classic matchups in Michael Irvin's young career. Good move to the inside. Aikman could not have thrown the ball better. Well, and you just saw a great illustration of one of the things that Michael Irvin does a lot. He is a big man at 6'2", 200, and he pushes off. A lot of DBs in the league complain about his use of the hands, and you saw it there. Emmett Smith exploits the hole, takes it to the 29-yard line, close to a first down, tackled by Copeland. That's just simple zone blocking on the draw play, and enormous hole up the middle for the Washington Redskins. The Redskins, they just are not, they're not making the contact. They're not bringing the football to the Cowboys. They're, they're standing up and they're, they're taking the blows. They're, that's exactly right, Frank. They are absorbing rather than penetrating the line of scrimmage. And they better get with it in a hurry or they are going to be in deep stuff. Second and inches. Meanwhile, on almost every replay, almost unnoticed, Darrell Johnson keeps turning in a great block. And paved the way that time. A couple of key receptions already. Ali actually led the Cowboys backs in receptions during the preseason. That was by design, working with him, and just to give him another receiver. And they have spread the ball around to their receivers tonight. Harper, Irvin, Smith, Johnson. It is third down and inches just inside the 30-yard line. Let's see who wins the battle up front. Big. Johnston, 14 yards, first down of the 16. Stopped by Edwards. Everybody in Dallas thought that Joe Gibbs was moaning and groaning to excess because of his complaining about the play of his team during the preseason, and especially, as Al mentioned in the open, with that 30 to nothing grubbing by Minnesota. Maybe Joe was right. This is an uninspired Redskin team to this point in time. Again, I talked about the Dallas offensive line and they're dominating the line of scrimmage. That is just plain putting them flat on their back. That's the longest run of Darrell Johnston's career. Pettibon looking on with a bit of anguish. And Aikman lost one for the end zone and Harper almost makes another fabulous catch, but not quite. And Harper's limping. Harper looked like he twisted a leg when he came down. Harper, he's in pain. He's going to head to the sideline. He had seven inches that time on the five foot eight Mayu. You know, we touched on the fact that at Tennessee he was an NCAA high jump champion over seven two. Did that in high school, as a matter of fact. 
That time he just mistimed it a little bit. A little bit of pressure for one of the rare times put on Aikman by Tim Johnson. Parker out, Martin in, Emmett Smith, a little bounce job. And then Stokes buries him at the 15 with 8.45 to go in the half. And Dallas on top, 9 to nothing. Change of direction has always been Emmett Smith's strong point. And right there, what really helped the Redskins more than anything else was that it looked like he stepped on his own feet. And that little stutter really cost Emmett Smith and allowed the Redskins and Fred Stokes to get in on the play. Another critical third down, though, here for Washington. Parker comes back in. He's set to the top of the screen. Third and nine at the 15. Aikman under some pressure this time. Steps up, throws too hard off the hand of Kelvin Martin at the goal line. And so the Redskins... Able to stop him, Charles Mann putting the pressure on that time, and Lynn Elliott and the field goal unit come in now for what will be about a 33-yard attempt. Again, a little pressure on Aikman coming from Charles Mann, who has been held in check tonight, not much as he was by Eric Williams last November when Williams started for the first time out there and held Mann without a sack. This time, enough pressure on Aikman that he missed through the ball. But Mann really did his job. Aikman was allowed to step up. There was nobody in the middle. 32-yard attempt for the rookie out of Texas Tech. Lynn Elliott, Burline holds, and Elliott kick, kicks the upright. So the Redskins hold, then get a big break, and they are very lucky the score is only 9 to nothing. It could be 24 to nothing right now. Lynn Elliott had a great preseason, won the job, and he misses from in close. The ball does not hook in. Catches the upright, big break for Washington. Now they have to do something with it. A real sports coupe is more than fancy technology. It's the perfect balance between the needs of a driver and the needs of a curve. With a pure, focused performance that makes even the same old roads seem new. Because it's not the road you take. It's how you take the road. The all-new 24-valve Ford Pro GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? He's defeated Mothra. He's defeated Engels and Mecha Godzilla. But he's never faced an adversary like this. Godzilla versus Charles Barkley. It's the battle of the century. Get ready to see a real monster jam. It's hard to believe so much beauty ended up in one place, America. And right now, you can see a lot more of it in a new Geo Metro from Alamo at a special low rate. We call it Alamo's Great American Rate. One low rate, good from coast to coast. And nationwide, with Alamo, you get all the miles for free. A Geo Metro at Alamo's Great American Rate. It's the perfect way to tour America, from sea to shining sea. Coming next Monday, a father, a son, a second chance. What do you say we take a different road together for a while? Robert Urich in a sneak preview of Crossroads next Monday. Aikman going over things with Burline, just led him on the uh, drive that consumed 62 yards, but they come up empty, and here are the skins now on first down, and Rippin going deep, and he hits Art Monk, and Monk makes the 800 second catch of his illustrious career, and it's good for a 27-yard gain. He is bounced out of bounds by James Washington. Well, sooner or later, number 81 is going to get a football. And that time, good pass protection for Mark Rippin. Joe Jacoby doing a good job on Charles Haley, standing him up, keeping him right on the line of scrimmage. He's a big man. 18 more catches now, and Monk will be the all-time leader in receptions. He'll surpass Steve Largent. And as you saw, he just became the fifth player in league history to go over 11,000 yards. First down at the 48. The fake to Irvin. 
The roll by Rippin. That buys time. Rippin going deep, but too deep. The coverage was there. Terry Orr, and you'll rarely see Orr going that deep. The H-back. Ray Horton back there covering. And you just saw why you will rarely see Terry Orr going deep. He gets himself tied up in the secondary with Larry Brown. And Rippin, in effect, just threw it away. Redskins, that first drive, resulting in a safety off the block punt, and then four plays in a punt, and then five plays in a punt, and now this. Second down and ten, and a fumble at the 47-yard line. Dallas has it. The fumble was between the center quarterback exchange a veteran center in Jeff Bostic, a veteran quarterback in Mark Rippon, who's only been in camp for a week. There's Bostic, who's been there forever. Let's see if we can see it. Actually, Rippon was leaving before the yeah. count. You could see the ball came up and was in Rippon's hands, but Rippon was on his way out and didn't control it. Recovery by Kenneth Gant, the safety, first down Dallas at the Skins, 46, Emmett Smith, Vintage Smith, gain of 10 to the 36-yard line. If uh, Emmett Smith in this game tonight is reminding me of Barry Sanders in so much that every time he touches the football, your heart just accelerates and you're wondering, is this going to end up being a, a highlight film type run. I mean, every time he's taking it, doesn't Frank, it's looking like that. He looks a lot like Barry Sanders, built low to the ground. They're going to take a look, see if it's a first down. But what ha has happened tonight is there have been so many Redskins that have taken a shot at him and have missed him. They're hesitating, and that makes him even that much more effective. Well, you, saw, you saw that graphic earlier. He became the first guy since Kelly, Leroy Kelly, in the mid-60s to score against the Skins in fourth grade games. And now he's just joined Otto Graham. Five straight games in which he has scored a touchdown. 78 yards already. So he's almost on a 200-yard pace at the moment. Here he is again on first down, getting next to nothing. Stokes is there to trip him up along with Andre Collins. And we have 6.40 to go at jam-packed Texas Stadium where the Cowboys have been dominant and lead 9 to nothing. I was talking with Richie Pettibone before the game, and there's been a lot of talk here in Dallas. This is the year they take the next step. That means the NFC Championship, and they're talking Super Bowl. And he's, Richie Pettibone said, you know, they sound like they're us. We're the Super Bowl champions. They're the ones who are trying to get there. But they came out, and they, so far, have really made their words stand up. So they're talking big. They're playing big. Second and nine, and Aikman throws a wobbly pass that Mayu picks off inside the 20-yard line. And Martin Mayhew gets banged down by Emmett Smith at the 41 as they pat each other on the helmets. Well, Martin Mayhew has been having an extraordinary preseason. Two interception return for touchdowns against the Raiders. And now this one, a much needed spark for the Redskins. And I don't know how he kept the ball off the field. And the attempt was to Alvin Harper. The question uh, won't be a question because they have given it to him, but it came close to a trap. Will they get the hand better? It matters not because they allow the interception out to the 42-yard line. The attempt to Harper, who was shaken up on the play. It looked like a trap from that angle, did it not? Mm -hmm. At the 42-yard line, Ernest Finer picks up the first down. But, of course, this year, upon no further review... Well, the other thing that would have been looked at there was whether or not he was down by contact. Was Mayhew touched by Harper when he was on the ground in possession of the ball? Let's look and see. Oh, but what a great play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yes. The other side of that is he should not have been given the yardage that he got up and gained after, uh, after the INT. Well, you hit it, Dan. He's been playing... Great football. He gets most of the attention because Daryl Green's on the other side. They usually send their best receivers against Mayhew. 515 remaining in the hand from the 46-yard line. Here is Ernest Finer. 
Cuts it back. Brown can't make the tackle. Sloppy tackling. And Gann finally runs him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Redskins now on a roll and just when they need it to. They've been pushed all around here in the first half. They can put seven on the board. They will be in good shape. Again, Biner, he's Mr. Everything for the Redskins. Nothing doing inside where he was supposed to take it. Breaks it to the outside. Good all-around football player. A couple of back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Good receiver. Clark and Monk stack to the right side and ripping yeah. over the wide open Clark and a touchdown. And so Mayu's interception completely turning it around. And the skins now down by three and going on two with the extra point. Cowboy just dropped back into a zone and Clark came down, moved to the inside, saw the zone, broke it to the flag and ripping with all the time in the world delivered. And the instant replay, opponents and proponents will have lots to talk about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Look at Clark, 84, a little dip to the inside. And James Washington, 37, fought it all as Clark turned it to the flag and Rippon was there. Chip Lowe Miller for the point after. Gary Clark. Receiving end of a ripping aerial with 4.48 to go in the half. A two-point down the sleeve now. They break and enter, but they're not thieves. We're getting too old for this. They know your secrets, but they're not spies. Mr. Richard, do you mind if I take a look? Carl, grow up. Now, they've been hired to find a secret. And your job is to find that little black box. More powerful than any weapon. Give me the box, Marty. There isn't a government on this planet that wouldn't kill us all for that thing. They've almost got us. Sneakers rated PG-13. Starts Wednesday in select areas and Friday everywhere. Ford Trust. The best ever is. People used to go out on Saturday night and leave their truck at home. Times have changed. Our 92 full-size pickup is still built Ford Tough. But we designed it to be more stylish outside, more comfortable inside. Now, if anything gets left at home, it will probably be their car. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. There's a tropical island that's not on any map, though it's easy to find. It's warmed by the sun and caressed by the winds with its own hidden treasures, local delicacies, and exotic festivals. But this island moves. It's a carnival cruise ship. So if you go, get there on time and get out your visa card. Because the world's most popular cruise line doesn't stay in one place for long, and it doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Texas tackles Syracuse. Tennessee takes on Georgia, plus other regional actions Saturday on ABC's College Football. Nothing quite like it, architecturally speaking. The hole in the roof and Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, just outside Dallas. Low Miller kicks off. <laughs> Whoa, I'll say. I almost put it out the hole. Well, without replay this year, and we're not going to believe, Ribbies, you're going to hear it a thousand times this year, but when something like the Mayu interception happens. You have to take a look at it because it's something that clearly gets overturned, at least in terms of down by contact. Well, watch the football. First of all, Mayhew does not have the ball. There it is on the ground. Mm -hmm. That is an incomplete pass by Troy Aikman. So it's the double whammy. Not only should Washington have not have had possession, they also should not have had the resulting yardage. So if you're keeping score, I, I think we saw conclusive evidence that it would not have been an interception. And it had been an interception. They, he also would have been down by contact. A fortuitous break. A double, a double bubble, but at least we didn't stop and look at it for five minutes. Here's Aikman. Back to throw. Stepping up now. And stepping out. For a 19-yard gain up to the 39-yard line. Very important now for Dallas to come back. They came into this game. They were fired up. The adrenaline was flowing. They were really stoked when they came out onto the field, led by this man. And now they're kind of back to normal, if you will. And it's important now that they step up. 4.28 to go in the first half. 
Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, the man who bought the team in 1989, the man in the middle. Was that Hank Williams Jr.'s cowboy hat walking around in there? It looked like it. And a whistle before the inception of the play. Yes, it is. Are you ready for some football? And there's a man under it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Excitement, <laughs> false start. <laughs> Offense, number 79, prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Enjoying a cold glass of ice water. Mm. A little refreshment here on a very warm night. For tea. Eric Williams is the guy who jumped. We mentioned Eric's name before, but not the same Eric Williams. The Redskins, of course, with a defensive tackle. Eric Williams, he's the guy who's hurt, and also Bobby Wilson was shaken up before, so he's out, and Jason Buck, a much-traveled defensive lineman, number 99, is in there. Aikman throws, and that's dropped by Johnston, who gets wrapped up immediately by Gouveia. It'll be second down and 15. Yeah, Look, I think that Johnston thought that ball was coming. It was sort of a who, me? That looks more like calf roping at a, at a rodeo. Gouveia throwing Johnston all the way around. There's Jim Hannafin, the great offensive line coach of the Redskins, uh, congratulating his guys, I'm sure, on some good pass protection, but at the same time explaining the facts of life to these guys that they have been less than dominant. Second and 15 at the 34-yard line. Little swing out to Emmett Smith, and he's tackled at the 34-yard line as Darrell Green stayed right with him to ensure no game. Third and long upcoming. And Dallas apparently losing a bit of their momentum. They went back to a very high percentage play with the second and long yardage, second and 14. They flip it out on the flat to Emmett Smith, hoping he can break a couple of tackles, get good yardage, and. Washington defends it very well. Third down, 14. A look through the face mask of one Charles Mann as Smith comes out. Cowboys, of course, if you follow them closely, they don't use the shotgun. Haven't at all since 89. Aikman lines up under center. Johnson stays in the block. Coleman comes racing through, but he gets it off to Kelvin Martin. And Martin seeks the first down, but is short up at the 44-yard line. A.J. Johnson with the tackle about four yards shy. Boy, there's the athleticism of quarterback Troy Aikman under great pressure from Monty Coleman. We already talked to you, told you about how fast he is. One of the great pass defensive linemen in the league, linebackers in the league, and he puts the pressure on Aikman, and Aikman with the flick of the wrist was able to complete the pass. Here comes Coleman. Well, the Redskins, Frank, have been getting good pressure outside from the ends, but they haven't been getting much up the middle. And that time, Richie Pettibone was forced to come with the blitz. And fortunately, Coleman was not picked up. Meanwhile, Washington has taken a timeout as they look ahead. They want to stop the clock. Otherwise, the Cowboys would have run as much time as they could have off the clock. And the Skins still have two timeouts, plus the free one at the two-minute warning, and they're going to get the ball back. 2.34 remaining in the half. Tomorrow night, a tropical island is the setting for a med school like one you've never seen before. From the producers of Northern Exposure comes the season's first hit series, Going to Extremes. You'll see it tomorrow at 10 o'clock, 9 Central and Mountain, right after Coach with Craig T. Nelson right here on ABC. Two thirty-four left in the half. Saxon will kick. And Brian Mitchell stands back at his 10-yard line to accept it. As you can see, the crowd fanning themselves here. Very still inside Texas Stadium. No air circulation because of the roof configuration. Saxon angles it, and that is a beauty. Do you believe the one-yard line? Just perfect. 54 yards. Well, Brian Mitchell, the return man, is, is told not to handle the ball inside the 10-yard line. He made the proper decision in not handling the football, and who's to know that this type of a bounce would happen? That is just plain old perfect. 
And that ball just does what it wants to do sometimes. And that time it decided to do Mike Saxon and the Cowboys a favor. So inside the one yard line now for the Washington Redskins. 226 remaining in the half. Hobbs and Sanders come in as we'll take a look at. And guys, here's where Dallas, having burned up some of their timeouts earlier, hurts them because they would want to stop the clock. Sure. Rippin throws, and that's picked, and he's lucky it wasn't picked off by Jones off the hands of Gary Clark, and Robert Jones was there, but could not come up with the interception. Now, there's a break for Dallas in several ways. One, no yardage on first down, but secondarily, it stops the clock. Now with 2.21 remaining, the Cowboys have one timeout, is that correct? They have one timeout, and it will also stop, of course, at the two-minute warning. Which could work at this point in either team's favor. Right. All depends. Second and ten. Finer after the eight-yard line. It's going to be third and three. James Washington. <laughs> this is one. This is one of those calls where you got to look at yourself and you go, "What do we do here? Do we call timeout?" Mm -hmm. No, I think you let it go to the two-minute yep. warning with only having one. We've already had one punt block, so at least you feel a little more comfortable getting away from your one-yard line where you can at least kick from some sort of a spread if you have to kick. A lot of pressure on the Washington Redskins to get a first down and keep the ball away from Dallas. they delivered this morning. Did you put it somewhere? Federal Express knows how it feels when you have to locate your package. Let me use it for a meeting. That's why Federal Express has a tracking system that can tell you where your package is. How about giving Mommy a hint? Of course, once it gets there, you're on your own. <laughs> Federal Express. Henry, where are my keys? Our most important package is yours. There's more than new looks to the 93 Ford Escort. There's a whole new way to buy an Escort. Because these four Escort LXs all share one low price. $10,499. The three-door, four-door sedan, five-door, and wagon all have air conditioning, AM FM stereo, power steering, power mirrors, and more. Four Escorts, one price. Now buying an Escort is as easy as only one. Have you driven a Ford? Two minutes to go in the first half. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff on opening night of our 23rd season. 9-7, the Cowboys in front. Third down and three upcoming for Washington at the Redskin eight-yard line. side and here's Biner and they stop him so the skins are going to have to kick Jimmy Jones makes the tackle and the Dallas Cowboys at this point will spend their final timeout so they stop the clock with 151 and when they get the ball back they do not have a timeout but they should get it back pretty close to midfield so in, rea in reality it was the Redskins taking of a timeout that is that really ultimately it's now backfired on them. Mm -hmm. And again, remember, Kelly Good firm has Burn has already had one blocked. And little things as a game goes along don't seem so big at the time. But remember when Dallas threw some, you know, some improper planning, had to use two timeouts sure. when they didn't need them at all. There was no strategical purpose for them using those timeouts and now look how desperately they'd love to have them back. Probably the only thing the Cowboys did wrong in the first maybe 22-23 minutes of the game 
was having to take those timeouts. And now almost certainly they will have the ball inside Redskin territory with any kind of a return. Mm -hmm. And the no timeouts takes away some of your options. Well, they owe getting the ball back to Mike Saxon, who pinned the Redskins at the one. And now Goodburn's going to have to punt him out of the end zone. Low, pretty short kick, but again, it takes a big Washington bounce, and Martin didn't come up to handle it, and that cost Dallas uh, a good 20 yards again. Well, Goodburn had to hurry that punt again. Eh? He was under enormous pressure to get that one off. So instead of about a 35-yarder, that's a 59-yarder. And, and there's a case where Dallas, having only one return man, backfires on them because it was not a good kick. It was angled off to the right, and Martin didn't get over there to field it. That's where if you have two deep, you can go ahead and fair catch the ball and, and really handle a bad kick. This time, with only Kelvin Martin deep, it works against the Dallas Cowboys and costs them a big chunk of yardage. Mm -hmm. Isaac Cole, who again came bursting through, he was the man who blocked Goodburn's kick, leading to a safety in the first quarter. Now, Dallas, without a timeout, from the 33-yard line. Aikman swings it to Smith, and Smith finally gets run down. There's a flag down at the 46-yard line. As the clock stops with 128, we'll get the call from Hantak, and we'll also tell you about the big sports news of the day, in case you have not heard, and that is the resignation of the baseball commissioner, Faye Vincent. Holding call coming up against Washington. Of course, last week, the vote of no confidence, 18 to 9, one abstention. Vincent originally said he would fight it, he would not resign, thought about it over the weekend at Cape Cod, where he is right now, and basically said a fight Based solely on principle does not justify the disruption. So Faye Vincent reluctantly steps down today as the commissioner of baseball. And he feels in effect that resignation is better than litigation. The holding call against the Redskins was declined. First down for the Cowboys now. And Leaping catch is made at the 43-yard line by Michael Irvin. And more importantly, Al, out of bounds, stops the clock, first down Dallas. He got position on Mayu inside him, and that's a 13-yard gain to the 43 of the Redskins. Again, Mayu had to give Michael Irvin a lot more than he wanted to. Michael Irvin, again, a deep threat. Goes up, protects the ball from Mayhew, comes down with the first down, stops the clock. I don't want to be guilty of hyping this game, but we have seen more good football in the first half of a preseason opener than maybe we had a right to expect. A lot of exceptional plays. A lot of great catches. 121 to go in the hand. Aikman throws wide open is Irvin, and that's another first down at the 26-yard line. That time, Darrell Green laying way off Michael Irvin. A good five, six yards away from Irvin. Keep in mind, he has he riddled the Washington defense last November. He has a lot of respect. Put the move on Daryl Green, made it look like he was going to take it deep. Green bought it. And it's another first down, also out of bounds, stopping the clock. With the amount of yardage they've covered, if Kelvin Martin handles that punt, they've already scored a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Cowboys up by two, 116 to go in the half. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Here come the Redskins, and Aikman gets hit as he throws as Wilbur Marshall came through on the right side along with Charles Mann to disrupt the play. Second down. Well, there's a mismatch. That's Wilbur Marshall working against Emmett Smith. Smith was forced to stay in and block, and, and that's a that's a kind of a matchup that the Redskins will will win every time. Wilbur Marshall against a lineman is a good one. Look at the bottom there. Emmett Smith just is no way. He ended up with really what looked to appear, appeared to be a very good block on Marshall, but Marshall got in and hit Aikman. For the first time, the Skins, too, Dan, had a little push up front, and Aikman couldn't step up. Second and 10 at the 26-yard line. A free play, and it's incomplete. Tim Johnson was the guy who jumped. Didn't you think you heard a whistle? I thought I did. No flag. I, I thought I heard a whistle blow. The 
Joe Gibbs thought he heard a whistle blow. Getting old, just ringing in our ears. Well, some of the players certainly look like it. <laughs> Your explanation may be accurate, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's third down and ten at the 26-yard line. 107 remaining in the first half. Again, Dallas without a timeout. Third and ten. Locked in for Harper. Touchdown. Darrell bringing the victim. And Harper may have got away with a little bit of pushing off. Looks like he took a page out of Michael Irvin's playbook. He was hand fighting Daryl Green inside the 10-yard line. And I agree with you, Frank. That's a lot of pushing and contact. Well, you match your best up. You leave him man for man and hope for the best because Daryl Green over the years has been one of the great ones of man for man. And this time he was beaten by Harper. Well, I think we're going to see a classic push-off with the right hand of Alvin Harper. He appeared to give Green a pretty good shove. Vanelli in for the point after. Let's take a look at Alvin Harper working against Daryl Green. The contact to watch for is going to be inside the 10-yard line. Now, Harper's just working to the outside. Green gives him the outside. Now, there's the right arm of Harper, and there's a shove. Gain separation. That, you know, the way I look at it, I, I think that's offensive interference, but... It's also well disguised and it goes on all the time. I, I'm not sure that's enough that you take anything away from Alvin Harper and what he did. You make it look like you're struggling yep. and yep. just that little bit of an arm, I can assure you, if you're trying to cover a man, is enough to slow you down. And look at Daryl Green. He's almost pushed over backwards. I think Daryl Green was confident he was going to draw a flag. The advantage of being a big receiver. Alvin Harper at 6'3", Daryl Green at 5'8". With Harper and Urban, big men on the outside for the Dallas Cowboys, and it is a real advantage that they're not afraid to capitalize upon. Meanwhile, Emmett Smith with a nice blitz pickup on that last play to enable Aikman to have the time to loft it perfectly. Dallas up by nine with 102 left in the half. And the kick from Elliott comes into the hands of Brian Mitchell. after starting at the nine yard line brings it back to the 41 yard line and he's tackled by the kicker Elliott the rookie remember how concerned we were about the Cowboys having no timeouts well they got into the end zone with a minute left over now the Redskins have two timeouts remaining and uh, they can threaten six plays in 35 seconds not bad mm. <laughs> not bad and you don't need us to tell you but that man and this team possess one of the great long ball games in the NFL. 53 seconds and 59 yards, hardly insurmountable. Well, the Skins still have those two timeouts left <laughs> at the 41-yard line. It's a strange game, isn't it? It is. Art Monk in motion. Art Monk on an end around has some blocking. Monk is ridden out of bounds at the 49 by Isaac Holt. That's a gain of eight. And very cleverly, Art Monk saves one of the two remaining timeouts, steps out of bounds after the pickup of about eight. 47 seconds remaining now in the half. Hardly a surprise that Art Monk makes a smart play. Hmm. Hardly. Only 13 years of them. <laughs> well, they're pretty close to field goal range when you've got a guy like Chip Lowmiller who had a Hall of Fame night here. In the Monday nighter a year ago, that pass is incomplete. It is third down and two intended for Irvin's. Oh, good read, too, on the part of Mark Rippon. Bill Bates had his eyes set on the interception. Rippon saw Bates coming in to make the move, and he just drilled it into the carpet. Third and two at the 49-yard line. Redskins have not converted a third down tonight. 0 for 4. Three-man rush. And Rippon not even close. The coverage was there intended for Ricky Sanders and his fourth down. 
Mark Griffin has thrown several good looking passes tonight. He has thrown several clunkers as well. That was the last two clunkers. qualifying as such. Of course, there was good coverage downfield. The Redskins having a hard time to figuring out the zone of the Dallas Cowboys. They had the one successful touchdown pass to Gary Clark. He was wide open. But other than that, the Cowboys defense has been very effective and it's been primarily zone. Goodburn to punt and nobody is back deep for Dallas. They'll just let it bounce. 35 seconds remaining. And Goodburn's kick. Is it stopped? <laughs> oh, very close. It is not. It is into the end zone as Johnny Thomas got down there but could not stop it from crossing the plane of the goal line, in effect. 51-yard kick. Good-looking dance move, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. They had a good effort, but the ball was ruled having broken the plane of the goal line, but <laughs> Johnny Thomas... Making you look awfully good. Yeah. Well, Johnny Thomas trying to keep his feet in bounds, but that's not the issue on that play. It's where the ball is. <laughs> Halftime report. We're going to have a feature on Desmond Howard. The Heisman Trophy winner joins the posse. And Dennis Green, the new coach of the Minnesota Vikings, who had a tremendous preseason and won in overtime yesterday against Green Bay, will visit with us live to talk about his NFL debut. Troy Aikman with a kneel down and for 23 seconds, let's see, Dick Hantak's going to bring him back out because the Redskins are going to take a timeout. So the Redskins are playing this one Look, according to the book. They've got the timeouts. So they're going to use them. They can stop it once more. Well, they're going to make the Cowboys execute a center quarterback mm -hmm. exchange. Mm -hmm. And stranger things have happened. The ball might come out. A long shot, but Joe Gibbs maybe serving notice on his football team that it's not yeah. as easy to just trot up to the locker room. Well, take a look at that. That's over the last four years. 23 of the 24 division champs over a four-year period have won their season openers. The only exception was Detroit last year, blown out by Washington on opening day, 45 to nothing, and then rebounding to win the Central Division. I'm sure everybody at home knew that anyway. That beyond question. <laughs> They've got Ray Horton, the safety, lined up as the tailback here. <laughs> That's pretty good insurance policy. When your safety is playing the tailback. And the final timeout. And the Redskins just took their last one. And Ray Horton gets a couple of offensive plays. Yeah. Another two-way player in the That's NFL. Right. That's right. This, this guy can tell his grandkids, hey, you heard it, Dorsett and Perkins and guys like that. Yeah, a, I was a tailback, too. Roy Green and that. Yeah. You know, here we go. Remember the Washington game? I yeah. went both ways. <laughs> Next week, we go to Cleveland Stadium, and uh, there's a picture of Dan Marino, and he opens his season since the Dolphins had the bye yesterday. They will face the Cleveland Browns, who fell victim to Ted Marcher Broda's Indianapolis Colts. Ted getting the job up there, and uh, the Colts, who won one game all of last season, beat the Browns 14-3. Meanwhile, Rippon and the Skins are going to go into the locker room down 16 to 7 after one more Aikman kneel down. And a first half very much dominated by the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm sure they'll be reminded that they came from behind last year on a Monday night game here in Texas Stadium. But they are going to have to play a noticeably better second half than they did here in the first. Halftime score, Dallas 16, Washington 7, and we'll return with halftime activities after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABC stations. Back at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, as the second half begins, 16 to 7, the Cowboys lead it by 9, they kick off. Lynn Elliott will send it skyward, and Desmond Howard and Brian Mitchell are back to receive for the Washington Redskins. Elliott, who won the job 
with a good preseason. It was nip and tuck with Brad Dalwiso. Through preseason after Ken Willis left for Tampa Bay on plan B. And we're going to take a look at Desmond Howard again, whose last run back was 23 yards. And this one is a little bit longer as he is knocked down by Washington up at the 26-yard line. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Chrysler Corporation and your local Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, and Eagle dealers by Levi's Dockers. Nobody does color like Dockers. And by Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. At the 26-yard line for the Redskins, first and 10. Griffin, after an off-and-on performance, mainly off in the first half, gives it to Ernest Viner, and that's a big hole through the middle and up to the 37-yard line. And let's take a look at the numbers for the first 30 minutes of play. Dominated by the team on the right side, the Dallas Cowboys. And you can see the opponent's points off turnovers. You can see that the turnovers were one each. But the Cowboys gave up seven points on that, well, what really was a bogus interception by Martin Mayhew. He really trapped the ball. On first down, Rippin airing it out and getting wide open was most of it underthrown. And getting back there is Horton. I mean, he was open by 10 yards. Rippin just a little late on the delivery. And Muck was either caught in a messed up defense or man just let him go. Let's take a look. Hope is number 30, but Art Monk just sprints by hold. He lets him go. Trying to get the help from the inside from Ray Horton, but he had a gap in there, and Mark Rippon was late on the delivery. Now you can see Rippon double clutch the ball and take a stagger step before he released it. As it was, the ball went 55 yards in the air. Second and 10. Biner makes the catch. Breaks the tackle, picks up the first down, takes it into Cowboy territory. Kenneth Gant was the guy who couldn't make the tackle. And Larry Brown finally ran him down. Let's take an eye here on Big Jim Lachey, number 79. Oh, and stepped on by his left guard, Raleigh McKenzie, stepped on his foot. And Put him on the ground. That's one of the few times you'll see Lachey flat on his back. Redskins go without a huddle, and then Rippon has a hard time with a handoff, and it's all he can do not to fumble it and give it to Ernest Biner for no gain on a messed up play. Second and ten. If one of the attempts of the Washington no huddle was to, in some way, disorient a rookie middle linebacker, Robert Jones, in the Dallas defense, I, I don't think it appears to be working. It has not in any way put the Dallas defense back on their heels. And this time, the Redskins elect to go back into the huddle. Second and 10 from the 49-yard line. Here's Finer swinging to the outside, and he runs right into big number 73, Danny Noonan. Cowboys doing a good job internally. Uh, we told you Russell Maryland not playing tonight. Tony Casillas, the two starting defensive tackles both out. Danny Noonan in there and Jimmy Jones, and they're doing a fine job. There is a look at Maryland. He has a dislocated second left toe of his left foot. And whether that's Casillas, he has the knee job, and Russell Maryland isn't even suited up tonight. He has a dislocated toe. Third and nine. Griffin under a lot of pressure just throws it away because Leon Lett came blasting through number 78. Well, you cannot blame Mark Griffin for that. A miscommunication on the Redskin left side of their offensive line. Watch Raleigh McKenzie, the left guard, go down toward the center and totally disregard Leon Lett, who's lined up on his outside shoulder. Cowboys also in a safety blitz, and that serve things up front and Rippin just had to deliver it. Skins still haven't converted a third down tonight. 0 for 6. Good burn to punt. He's been lucky with short kicks that have bounced for him. This one is a liner. Fair 
caught at the 10-yard line by Kelvin Martin. 12-11 to go in the third quarter. Cowboys by nine. become fashionable to hop on the safety bandwagon. We thought you'd like to know who built the bandwagon. In the car business you lead, follow, or get out of the way. I'm Spike. My house. And these are my housemates. Oh, this place is war. I ain't playing ball with no ball hog and trash talking. Showboat. Nike way. High flying. Donut dunking. Hip hopping. Homeboy from Harlem. And I ain't playing ball with no left footed. Boston loving. Gravity bound. Nike way. No dribbling. Golden hair. Hockey playing. Farm board. From South Dakota. Hold up. If we're going to live together, we got to play together. The more colors, the more better. Peace. Texas Stadium rocking and rolling like the old days. Here's some Cowboys you're also going to be seeing a lot of this season. Take note, little guys. Here are the Cowboys of Moo Mesa. We've got Moo Montana, Dakota Dude, and the Colorado Kid. Their season will begin this Saturday, 9 o'clock Eastern, here on ABC. Eight out to West in L.A. That's 9 o'clock Eastern a.m. for you little guys. Okay, partners? Utterly fantastic, Frank. Mm, I believe so. I'm going to milk that a little more, but <laughs> from from the ten yard line on first down. Emmett Smith goes next to nowhere. Tim Johnson, 78, makes the tackle. Kurt Govey is there as well. Bobby Wilson, who started the game at defensive tackle, there he is, 94 sprained knee. Clearly, he is done for the night. As we mentioned before, Eric Williams now missing from the defensive line they don't expect to see him until October so Jason Buck a much traveled defensive lineman is a guy who's going to see a lot of action 99 and we've not seen a big push by the Redskins up the middle we've commented on it several times they need to develop a rush coming up the middle of the line second and eight that time the rush came from the outside but somehow some way Michael Irvin is able to make the catch flag down. It's a personal foul against the Redskins. And this will put Dallas clear across the midfield line. Urban still down. Boy, he uses his hands not only to catch the ball, but to get clear beforehand. Personal foul. Defense number 58 hitting the quarterback with the crown of his helmet. 15 yards. First down. Now they're going to call it on Wilbur Marshall. He took a Tremendous shot of Troy Aikman after he delivered the ball. You heard Dick Hansack say he hit with the crown of his helmet. And you cannot do that. You saw Wilbur at the last minute intentionally lower his head and use it as a weapon that will not be tolerated in the NFL. Even though it was not what I would describe a, a vicious hit. Now let's, the conclusion of that play, Michael Irvin, again, working against Daryl Green. Subtle work with the right hand, gain some separation, and that is just beautiful work by a receiver. Daryl Green, 5'8", Michael Irvin is 6'2", but that's just great hand fighting. Hey, I mean, how can you possibly fault the coverage by Daryl Green? He was right on him. A lot of smiles on that Cowboy sideline tonight from the 43-yard line on first down. Here's Smith on it. Picking and threading and bouncing down to the 35 for a gain of eight. Tackle by Stokes. 10.55 to go in the third. Cowboys up by nine. Jimmy Johnson out of Port Arthur, Texas. That was his hometown. He was a schoolmate of Janis Joplin. 
He sat behind him in a couple of classes, and there's a bust of each at the Port Arthur Library, including a five-headed statue of Janis Joplin. Just one head for Johnson, but enough hair for five heads. <laughs> Second and one at the 35-yard line. He'll be thrilled. <laughs> Here's Emmett Smith. Picking up seven on his way to 100 yards. First down at the 28. Gouveia with the tackle. Well, Emmett Smith last year, that's a record of his team's total yardage on the ground. He accounted for 91.4% of it. And as you can see, some of the others, including when Dickerson was with the Rams, he gained about four-fifths of their yards. And Sanders last year with Detroit, 80 percent. Emmett Smith over 90 percent. And tonight, 96 yards of their 136. So he's getting a little more help tonight than he normally does. First down. Aikman to Johnston. Tackled by Andre Collins, who uh, breaks it up nicely. Green well played by Collins and you know Smith is talking about a 2,000 yard season talks openly about it would have to average what about 125 per carry not unrealistic uh, he is very sturdy he's been very sturdy and very reliable and injury free from the time he was in high school he loves to carry the football loves to carry it a lot of times and he would like to be a 2,000 yard back Second and 10 at the 28, under nine minutes left in the third. Cowboys lead 16-7. Swing it to Emmett Smith. And he is finally knocked down by Raven Caldwell after Wilbur Marshall turned him back inside. An exceptional open field tackle by Caldwell. One of the things that Emmett Smith is not pleased about is the fact that with Kirvin Richards being hurt, Smith is having to run all the plays during practice, not only during the offensive part of practice, but during the defensive part of practice as well. Here's another look at that tackle by Raven Caldwell. Look how he gathered himself, then propelled himself forward, wrapped up, got both of Emmett Thomas's legs. Emmett Smith, I keep wanting to say Emmett Thomas. Uh, well, he was good, too. <laughs> well, he's the coach with the Redskins and a former coach in St. Louis. Too many Emmett's out here. 39. Glad Emmett Kelly's out here. <laughs> that kicked off, and that's exactly what the Skins needed. Brad Edwards, and he runs it all the way back to the 36-yard line. And that is exactly what the Redskins needed right there. One of the few poorly thrown balls by Aikman. That one, he was trying to lay in, and he was just a little late on the delivery. And Edwards timed it out beautifully. Edward Edwards made his break for the ball a good 10 yards from behind the receiver. You wonder if maybe Aikman's up. Yeah, look at Aikman working that side of the field the whole way. That brought Edwards over probably prematurely. Stepped in front of Kelvin Martin and made the interception. Aikman would have been better served to glance over to the right side of the field. Freezing those Redskins safeties for maybe a step more. 7.59 remaining in the third. Ricky Irvins is the running back in this set. Ricky Irvins has the football. And Ricky Irvins gets banged down by Washington, the safety up at the 41-yard line. Brad Edwards making that interception was, as Joe Jacoby comes limping off, Edwards, a plan B guy. They've got three plan B guys in that defensive backfield. And pretty much uh, as Jacoby limps off, Testament to the work of Bobby Bethard and his successor, Charlie Casserly, as Jacoby needs attention, and the work that the Redskins have done in their pro scouting area. Second and five. That's incomplete into the third down. Jacoby being replaced by Ed Simmons, number 76, who had a total knee reconstruction last year. And it appears that Joe Jacoby is in a lot of pain. You saw the frustration when he banged his helmet into the bench. There's Ed Simmons. And a lot of Washington eyes are on Simmons to see how he is going to proceed here after that total knee. Joe Jacoby had his own knee surgery back in 89. Moved him into guard for a year. Now he's back out of tackle, but they're working on Joe Jacoby on the sideline. Third and five. The play clock is down to five. Skins are... They won't get it off. 
in a position where they barely get it off. And then Rippon loses the ball as he gets sacked at the 33 by Haley and gets it back. And, and Mark Rippon should know better. That's a play where the advantage goes to the defense. They know when the ball is going to be snapped. And Charles Haley just beats Jim Lachey to the corner. Rippon and the Redskins would have been better served by calling a timeout. Watch Haley, bottom of your screen. Only been here a week. Well, it was over on the first step. Lachey was late coming off the ball. He either didn't hear. Rippon give the go count to start the play or whatever. The crowd noise a factor there. But that was over on the first step as, the, as Haley moved and Lachey did. Nice save by Goodburn on a bad snap. And then it's his best pick of the night in terms of yards in the air. And Martin runs it back from the 20. He's out in front. Martin's going to go all the way for a Dallas touchdown. No flag. Kelvin Martin did it against Philadelphia last year. 85 yards for a touchdown win. The Cowboys needed a big play. They went on to win, and he has done major damage here. Well, Wayne Severe, the special teams coach of the Redskins, is going to go crazy because two Redskins have Martin, and they sail right over each other, right here. Look at that. Two guys were right there in a position to make a hit on Kelvin Martin, and neither one of them even touches him. Beautiful run by Kelvin Martin. 79 yard return. Lynn Elliott to the point after. Furline to hold it. And the two big name return men on this football field are Brian Mitchell and Desmond Howard. And it's Kelvin Martin who breaks open the game with this punt return. Oh, they are happy in Texas. Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers announced the wide open spacious sale. A sale on America's lowest price six passenger cars. Spacious Acclaim from Chrysler Plymouth. Spacious Spirit from Dodge. Both offer automatic. Plus now at no charge, air, tilt, tinted glass, cruise and more. Yes, all at no charge. Now also with 1,000 cash back, up to 2,600 total savings for their lowest prices ever. Under 11.2. Now at your Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers. The party in the pound. The Dolphins test the water in the Browns' big pool. It's another Monday matchup. Gonna make it drool. Well, they have waited months for this night in Irving, Texas, ever since that schedule came out. And it said opening night, a Monday night against Washington. And it's been pretty much a dream come true for every Cowboy fan. They lead 23-7. Elliott's kick is deep enough. Well, there won't be a touchback. There will be a Desmond Howard run back, but not very far to the 17-yard line. But to me, even though you lose three yards from where you would have had it on a touchback, that's a chance worth taking every yep. time. Put it in the hands of somebody who's capable of making a big play. They're tiny portraits of the people. They sing of our heroes and celebrate our homeland. There are as many reasons to love them as there are people who love them. Be 
these are stamps worth saving. Ask for the World War II stamps at your post office now. America loves a little extra space. So your Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealers announce the wide-open spacious sale. A sale on America's lowest price six-passenger cars. Spacious acclaim from Chrysler Plymouth. Spacious spirit from Dodge. More room than Honda Accord with automatic. Plus now at no charge, all these features. Even air. Yes, at no charge. Get 1,000 cash back. Save up to 2,600. Their lowest prices ever under 11.2. Now at your Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers. She doesn't want to go back to work for a while. She likes staying home with the baby. How old's the baby now? She's two months old tomorrow. I swear she's a genius. Yeah. No catchy jingles. <laughs> Look. No images of snow-capped mountains. She got lucky, I guess. <laughs> no rock stars. No another Heineken. Yeah. No sports stars. You know, I've been getting them. None of that is what made Heineken the number one imported beer in America. So you like being a dad? I wouldn't trade it for anything. You gotta try it. It sounds just like my in-laws. She has a new life in a new town, and she left her roots behind. She's back. She's blonde. She's Delta Burke. And ABC's got her Tuesday, September 15th. That is a grim group, and I don't mean Russ, who is an assistant coach. Larry Pecatello on the right, and Emma Thomas is there. And Charlie Casserly, upper left, is the general manager of this team. And we started talking about Charlie before and the great moves he has made, but uh, they do not like anything they have seen this evening. And neither has that man. Joe Gibbs. And I've been talking about Emma Thomas all night. <laughs> Finally got him on. Redskins have it. They trail 23-7. First and 10 from the Washington 18-yard line. 6.32 to go in the third. And Ricky Irvin ducks the initial hit and then gets out to the 20 for a pickup of two. And Joe Jacoby, by the way, remains on the sidelines and they continue to look at him. They have put an ice bag on his left knee. Yeah, we understand he will not be back tonight. Football is an attitude. It is a desire to get to the football, either offensively or defensively. And tonight, the attitude belongs to the Cowboys. Second down and eight. Here's Art Monk. Lurching forward to the 33. Larry Brown with the ankle tackle. Art Monk has been in the league, of course, since 1980. And he made his debut against the Cowboys almost uh, 12 years to the day, September 8, 1980, on his way to the Hall of Fame. But he needed 19 coming into tonight's game to pass Steve Largent, 18 to tie, 19 to pass. What does he have two for 803? Mm -hmm. Also came in with 132 game consecutive streak. Here's Gary Clark. He gets surrounded by a trio of Cowboys and is tackled at the 42. Of course, Steve Large is going to see everything go down the drain this year. James Lofton surpasses him yesterday in receiving yardage sooner or later this year, or probably before the end of the month, or at least in early October. Monk will surpass him in catches. And Jerry Rice, before the end of the year, is going to get him in touchdown receptions. Uh, Jerry Rice had 193, and uh, Largent's record at an even 100. That, that may be just a couple games work for Jerry Rice. Yeah. Regardless of who's playing quarterback. Second and one at the 42-yard line. And Ricky Irvin hit by Leon Lett, but might have enough for a first down up at the 44-yard line, and he does. A little second effort on the part of Ricky Irvin. 5'7", 200-pounder, a former Pac-10 rushing leader back when he was a junior, and the Redskins were able to get him in the third round pick last year. And Joe Gibbs will tell you, it didn't... He just couldn't keep him out of the lineup. Every time he came in, every time we put him in there, something happened. And he certainly would like to see something happen at this point. Something just happened to Mark Slorath. He is now out. Jacoby's out, and Ray Brown is in. And here is Sanders on an end around, and he wishes that play hadn't been called. Kenneth Gant with the tackle. Gant, the player that the Cowboys thought should have gone to the Pro Bowl last year for his special teams play. We've got a Cowboy down on the field. There's Haley limping off, and we have another Dallas player down at the 40-yard line. Not going to speculate. There's Schlereth over on the sideline. They're looking at his lower leg down around the knee. I can't see a number, so I won't speculate. Haley walked 
lurking around on the sideline. We're looking at number 97, Jimmy Jones. And he appears to be that player. We can see him clutching his left leg there as he's at the 41-yard line, and that is Jimmy Jones that is on the ground, number 97. And here's Haley. Can't see much of anything there. What happened to Charles? He appeared to be the better of the two, and good news there. Jimmy Jones trots off the field. Meanwhile, for the Redskins, Mark Schlereth has come back in. Ray Brown has come back out. Mm -hmm. And Jacoby, as we mentioned, is done for the night. Second down and 15 for Washington. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Cowboys lead by 16. Haley's back in as well. Yep. And Rippin has it batted back, and that's about as far back as you can bat a ball. Almost 20 yards. Leon left, letting loose. And Leon's had a couple big plays tonight. A lot of people getting in the act for the Cowboys along their defensive front. Leon, six foot six. And a design rollout. And Mark Rippin tries to go back into the middle. And Leon gets that big paw up there and deflects it back. You can see he was attempting to throw it to Ricky Sanders right in his line of sight. Third and 15. The Redskins still without a third down conversion tonight. And finally, they, did they get it? I think they're going to get it as Clark makes the catch and his forward progress does net him the first. Clark pushes him back, but they get a first down at the 45-yard line. And that's a good spot. That's exactly where he caught the ball and where contact was made in his forward progress stop. Good pattern by Gary Clark. Again, it's the Cowboys' own defense. Larry Brown gives him a little bump, steps up, and Clark reads it, takes it down deep about 15 yards, breaks it off out in front of Ray Horton, and Mark Rippon was right on target. Big-time veteran play for Clark, knowing exactly how much yardage he needed. This time he picks up about four as he gets hit by Larry Brown at the 41-yard line. Larry Brown, great story. 12th-round draft choice. Last year, not only in his second year in the league, and really a solid starter, so solid of a starter, that when Kevin Smith, their number one draft choice this year, comes along, they put him behind Isaac Holt on the other side of the, of the ball. That's, uh, that's pretty lofty praise for a 12th round draft choice in only his second year. Jimmy Jones back in for Dallas on second and six. Open is Irvin. Irvin loses the football. Loose on the sideline. But Washington maintains possession. Ricky Irvin's able to scramble back up and get it after Kenneth Gant with a hellacious hit. Well, that was a terrific effort on the part of Irvin to get back to the football. He tore himself out of the tackle and was able to get back and make the recovery and keep the yardage. Good read by Rippon. Cowboys rolled their zone into the coverage. And he read that perfectly and fired to Irvin. And there's Irvin. Pulling out of the grass for the tackler to make the recovery. Well, it wasn't so hellacious, but it knocked the ball loose. Third oh, and six. I think it was. At the 41-yard line, Irvin's begins spinning, and Irvin takes Bates across the 35, and he picks up the first down. That's what Joe Gibbs has said time and time again about Ricky Irvin. He just makes things happen out there. Well, that's one big difference between the Redskins and the Cowboys. If Emmett Smith gets hurt, look out for Dallas but with the Redskins you've got Biner and Irvins <laughs> 33 yard line first and 10 Washington third quarter winding down the catch is made at the 28 yard line by Ricky Sanders Brian Mitchell on the Washington bench That's and Robert Green, the rookie running back, a free agent this year, from William & Mary. He's here because he was friends with J.D. Gibbs, Joe Gibbs' son. Joe would travel down to William & Mary to watch him play and saw Green in the process. 
Rippon on second and four throws complete very close to a first down to the uh, tight end Don Warren the 14 year veteran he stopped by Norton with uh, under a half minute to go in the third period in fact uh, the the youngster from William and Mary Green probably costing Gerald Riggs his job Riggs though keep in mind is still out there mm -hmm. unclaimed by another club and should the Redskins at any time need a running back he's the first guy they'll bring back in it came down though at the end to, uh, do you keep Riggs or do you keep Green it's called the future they just get the playoff. The third period ends on this pass out of the end zone. Intended for Clark. He looks for an interference call from the side judge. And there is a flag down at the six-yard line. But it didn't come out of the pocket of the man closest to the play. Coming upfield a bit. And the last couple of passes by the Redskins, Mark Rippon has been hit and hit hard. Offensive interference against the Redskins. But Rippon has taken a couple of good shots. That time from Jeff Coat. So offensive interference against the Redskins is the play that will end the third quarter. And there's that great offensive threat, Ray Horton, talking to the <laughs> official. Jeff Coat, number 77. Stumbles into Rippon as he fought past Donnie Warren. Gary Clark was in the area of the flag. I don't know whether he was called for offensive interference or not. Well, here's not told us as yet. Now here's Dick Antak to give it to us. Offensive pass interference against the offense, number 84. 10-yard yeah. penalty. Repeat the down. First down. This is the end of the third quarter. It'll be first and 20 at the 33 when we come back. Cowboys lead 23 to 7. And we'll return to Monday Night Football after this work from our ABC station. The Cowboys came into the league in 1960. They're 73-0 when leading after three quarters by 16 or more points. On first and 20, Rippon throws to the 30-yard line, and Gary Clark gets banged down at the 28. So they had a 73-0 record even without Dennis Eckersley. Joe Jacoby on the bench. We have told him not. He will not be back. He has been getting ice on his left knee. We, we find we find some amazing numbers downstairs. <laughs> in other words, in, oh, a, situation, in, there in a situation such as this, the Cowboys have never been overtaken. And Rippon throws and overtakes Gary Clark, throwing it off the goalpost. And it will be third down. Again, that was just a late read on the part of Rippon. Gary Clark had a step on the cornerback. Had Rippon been able to deliver a little earlier, six points. And Joe Gibbs be fed The Redskins are they just kind of out of sync both offensively and defensively. They were shocked and stunned when they lost 30 to nothing and their regular stayed in the game right into the fourth quarter last week against Minnesota. And they're playing about the same way here tonight. Redskins current drive 55 yards, but they're still just in field goal range, and that's a long field goal on third and 14, and this play is dead. Before its inception, as Haley had come across the line, induced or not is the question. Well, you'd think, though, that for the whistle to have blown, that this must be against Washington, so because if Haley was across the ball, that's not enough to stop ball it. Ball start, offense, mm -hmm. number yeah. 79. Jimmy says snap, having his problem. Five-yard penalty, still third down. If yeah, that's he just took a, that left step, dropped that left foot, Dan, you know that right. he's concerned about getting beat. Yeah, if that's just Haley jumping off sides, they don't, they don't blow the whistle and stop it. There's... 79 Lachey at the top and you see him start to come back out of his stance way before the snap of the ball he was he was going on one when Rippon was going on three again Lachey with that long holdout and didn't look good against Coleman in the exhibition game against Minnesota third down and long and Irvin's on a delay that fools nobody Ernest Finer rather as the Dallas defense 
surrounds him, stops him for no gain. And the Redskins are going to have to settle for a long field goal attempt by Lohmiller. And on third and extremely long, that doesn't demonstrate a lot of confidence in your passing game by running a delay. Lohmiller, one of the great kickers. But he had four here last year in the Redskins, 33, 31 victories. All long ones. This is as good a night as a, I think a kicker has ever had. This one is 49 yards, held by Rutledge, and Low Miller just loves this ballpark. Right down the middle. With five or six yards to spare. 13 38 to go in the that, fourth quarter. That looks to be good from at least 55. Mm -hmm. 23 10. dash the first shoulder harness the first to install airbags in every car and minivan they built the first car to offer both dual airbags and the world's only built-in child seat at a time when it has become fashionable to hop on a safety bandwagon we thought you'd like to know who built the bandwagon in the car business you lead follow or get out of the way Radio Shack is America's number one electronic store. And with more than 80 antennas and hundreds of accessories, Radio Shack is America's number one antenna store, too. When you buy a Super Color Special TV antenna, Radio Shack has everything you need to make installation easy. Super Color's advanced technology gives you the clearest picture and sound possible. Hey, great picture, huh, Howie? Uh, no. Two great antenna values starting at only $24.88, just in time for football. Nobody compares to Radio Shack, America's technology store. Friends and family thing, gotta talk to you, man. Alan? Hi, Mom. That person you gave our number to called about leaving AT&T for MCI and hassled us about this friends and family plan. Alan, Doug, this friend... At AT&T, your family and friends are your business. Keeping you connected to them is ours. It's Gail. Gail. Sam's guy called and said you gave him my number. Thanks a lot. It's just not worth it. <laughs> Texas tackles Syracuse. Tennessee takes on Georgia, plus other regional actions Saturday on ABC's College Football. If you are a Cowboy fan, that is the perfect sign. 23-10, Dallas ahead. Lomiller booms one into the end zone, and that is down. Eight yards in by Alexander Wright. And the Cowboys. We'll take possession of the 20, 13, 32 remaining, and Dallas up 23 to 10. What will it be, Phyllis? Make it a Bud Light. Sorry. This is the last one. Well, I think I've been. Well, I don't take that one. What do you want to give for it? I'm a two and a ten. Give me ten and a twenty big. Give me twenty now, thirty. Give me thirty now, forty big. Give me forty now, fifty. Give me fifty now, sixty big. Give me sixty now, seventy. Give me seventy now. 80. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Bud, Bud Light, Light, please. Sorry, boys. This is the last one. On the Adventure Channel, join explorer Marceau Soulemaire as he unlocks the mystery of the Great Barrier Reef. Submerge with him into an amazing world. You Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going and going. An Indy engine today costs in excess of $100,000, so it is a major investment. And we, we think it's very important uh, to use Pennzoil to protect that investment. The quality of Pennzoil is very important to us. It's always high quality. Pennzoil has never let us down. If Pennzoil is good enough for us, it's certainly good enough for the average car owner. I use it in every car I own and drive. Performance, protection, quality. That's what Pennzoil means to me. Dallas Cowboys, Nate Newton, helping to lead the way up front. On the offensive line, they lead 23 to 10 with 13-32 remaining in the fourth quarter. And it's pretty much the same people as they had a year ago, except they are a year older. Nate Newton has moved back to left guard. We played for so many years, and it's just that they have collected a 
tremendous crop of athletes here. Dallas has eight Plan B players, eight first-round draft picks, and six second-round picks, and they're growing up. And it's Smith. First down, 17-yard gain to the 37-yard line. And again, Emmett Smith doing in the skin. A team that's been so tough to run against in recent years, and Emmett Smith keeps going up into triple figures against them. They were third in the NFL last year against the rush. And Emmett Smith is making them look like 23rd. There he is, 19 carries, averaging almost six yards a carry tonight. Yard line, Alfredo Roberts in motion. Give it to Smith again. Big enough hole. Out to the 42, and they're opening up some nice holes for Emmett Smith. And of course, they're also going to get a guy, Stepnoski, who a lot of people think is their best offensive lineman back maybe next week. Although they've been delighted with the way Frank Cornish has been playing the center position in Stepnoski's absence. I know one thing about Washington oh, that the, the talk shows and the papers are going to be busy after this preseason of theirs and after this opener they're going to be want to talking uh, they're going to want to talk about 1988 the year after winning the Super Bowl when they went seven and nine and failed to make the playoffs they've already been beating around that bush in Washington and boy it's going to heat up Emmett Smith can't dance his way to a first down this time it'll be third and three up at the 44 Marshall and Stokes make the tackle and I think one big difference, Dan, is the Skins will tell you in, in 88, Doug Williams was the quarterback, but he had only taken over late in the 87 season. Tim Smith proved to be a one-game wonder. Kelvin Bryant was hurt. Oh, don't misunderstand me. There is no way this team is going to go 7-9. and nine. Mm -hmm. That will not keep people from talking about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. They've already been hot on the topic after their lackluster preseason, and this, this certainly isn't going to quell it. <laughs> Danny Noonan with the newest in hatch. Third and three at the 44. And Martin gets bumped, almost broke free for a first down, but gets hit again and is stopped short of it up at the 46-yard line. The old saying is, where your head goes, your body follows. I think it also follows. If your head is cool, your body is cool. Noonan going for the ice down look. <laughs> But now he's got to get ready yeah. to go back to work. Because the Cowboys will be forced to kick. Defensive lineman ought to walk around with an ice bag on it. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Mike Saxon to punt. Brian Mitchell back to receive. Dale Hillistray is the snapper. Good deep angle kick, fair caught at the nine. 45 yard punt, Brian Mitchell making the catch at the nine yard line. So the Skins have it deep in their own territory with 10.51 to go. And the Cowboys up 23 10. I've messed up on a few relationships in my life, but there's one that's lasted over 35 years with a lot of help from Quaker State. It's tough on wear, tough on sludge. So Quaker State and I are planning on a meaningful relationship with my new car. So why don't you do the same with your new car's engine, and Quaker State will guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. You think if I gave Lonnie the Quaker State deal, she'd give me the same guarantee? <laughs> Quaker State is one tough motor oil. Mothra. He's defeated Engus and Mecha Godzilla. But he's never faced an adversary like this. Godzilla versus Charles Barkley. It's the battle of the century. Get ready to see a real monster jam.
Jordan and the RMCC Celebrity Golf Championship preceding college football Saturday, except on the West Coast where it follows it. And check your local listings. Regional action this week. Texas against Syracuse. Tennessee, Georgia, for those of you down south. Oregon, Stanford out west. Mid-section of the country, Missouri, Illinois, and some of you will see Bowling Green against Ohio State. Double duty for Mr. Deardorff this weekend. Looking forward to it from Columbus. Last time I was at Ohio Stadium, I was a senior at Michigan. <laughs> Miner up to the 15-yard line for a gain of <laughs> six. Oh, man. Now, what, what is that card worth these days, folks? Free mustache. About... 14 to 15 cents. Huh? All right, now, with an autograph on it, about a dime? What do you figure? It's coming down. <laughs> It'll be off the market. Trading will be suspended by the time you do it. Huh? <laughs> Second and four at the 15-yard line. Rippin throws, and that is dropped by Art Monk. Low pass, brown covering, incomplete. Third down coming up. You know, last year, the Redskins ended the preseason with a clunker against the Jets. They played terribly. Bounced back the next week and won 45-0 against Detroit. So a lot of people are saying, you know, hey, uh, so what? Preseason means zero. And normally it does. But it was a precursor to the way the Redskins have played tonight. You're right. Bill Gibbs said You're right. as much last night. He was really concerned. And I don't think he was just being... The worrisome Joe Gibbs that you usually have. He was puzzled by it all. Clark makes the catch up at the 28-yard line. That's enough for a first down. I mean, he, he's a worry ward anyway. You know, Joe is never going to be uh, a bullion and optimistic and enthusiastic, at least outwardly. But didn't you uh, get the sense that he was real last night? He he talked about how it was the best training off-season training program they've had since he's been there. Yep. From the 28-yard line is made by Ricky Sanders up at the 40-yard line. First down, Robert Jones makes the tackle. And as we uh, mentioned at the very outset tonight, the NFC East is going to be the toughest of the divisions. Philly wins yesterday. Dallas on their way to a win tonight, but there's plenty of time left. But Washington showing not much in terms of being able to overcome this lead. They can't act with the goal. Ball start. Offense. Two players prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Okay, one, two, one of them. Once you put your hand on the ground, you cannot come up out of that stance. There's Raleigh McKenzie and Jim Lachey on the left side. Some sort of confusion as to whether or not Mark Rippon is calling a play or calling for the snap of the football. You know, Lachey is getting dangerously close to Dan, too, on pass plays, lining up off the line of scrimmage. Well, there's always big talk about enforcing that, but they never do. Look at Haley run that down. That's the off-tackle, the counter tray, a lot of ways you can call it. And Haley read it, came down the line of scrimmage, and caught it from behind. Miner is knocked down. No gain. See, Washington had a good drive going here, a couple of successive first downs. And now, what's happened? An offside penalty and a, and a poorly executed play. Second and 10 at the 34-yard line. Eight and a half to go. Cowboys up by 13. Ripping with time. And a leaping, juggling catch is made up at the 49-yard line. The Cowboys are saying no, sir, but Gary Clark did come down with a football. And Washington keeps it going with a first down near midfield. Hmm. Clark <laughs> keeping. <laughs> he was actually oh. banged back into the ball, kept his concentration, and came up with it. Just a little short of the first. But the Irvins will get it. We Didn't that ball hit the ground? Very possibly as yeah. Miner picks up three, but of course, with that replay, away we go. Haley, meanwhile. Still bother. Something in the neck and shoulder. Well, he has already become a force here tonight, though, pressuring the passer. Let's look at this long. again. I guess the ball comes down and actually cradles in the arm of Clark. Rippin uh -oh. throws. It's intercepted, but there's a flag down 
James Washington has it. There was no Redskin near it. Ricky Sanders doesn't have his jersey on. I know that. Shoulder pads is torn right out of Ricky Sanders' jersey. I think that's probably going to be the call. That's a pretty good indication. Illegal contact. Defense, number 37. Five-yard penalty. First down. Ricky Sanders gave a little move to the inside and then was going to take it deep, and Washington knew he was going to be beat. And he just reached out and grabbed well, the him call, and stripped him. The call was the illegal contact. It was major league contact, though. I have to give James Washington credit for that. He knocked Ricky Sanders completely on his back. And had he not, it might have been six. At the 42-yard line, first and 10, 7.22 remaining. 13-point Dallas lead. And Rippon airs it out for Sanders and overthrows him by a good six or seven yards. And that's an easy Washington touchdown. Ricky Sanders was two to three yards past the closest Dallas player. That was almost out of the same area code, wasn't it? He was wide open. All he had to do was lead him to the corner, and you got a quick six. Well, it's opening night. Nobody's going to win the Super Bowl tonight, but Dallas is sending a pretty good message out. One of the men that's been kind of subtle because he has not gotten to ripping that much has been the play of Charles Haley. What they didn't do last year, they had 23 sacks, they only had 12 interceptions. He's going to make a major difference in their pass defense. Well, I mentioned the word attitude before. I mean, the attitude tonight has belonged to the Dallas Cowboys. They have out-hustled the Redskins. Second and ten, and Rippin gets hit as he throws. As Leon Lett, Leon Lett, who didn't figure to play that much tonight, but is getting an opportunity because of the injuries to the defensive line, the absence of Casillas in Maryland, and very much making his presence felt all night long. Out of Emporia State. Big. 6'6", 287 pounds. And he has been going sideline to sideline tonight. Third and ten. Cowboy offense exhorting the defense. Monk in motion. Here comes Haley with a spin move. Rippin throws, gets it away. Catch is made by Biner, knocked down by Gant. Short of the first down. Oh, this is a critical deal now for the Redskins. They almost have to go for it. Oh, yes. I mean, there's no hesitation. A low Miller Warren. field. Donnie Warren coming right into the lineup. With two touchdowns giving you the win, a field goal is really not of any importance. You would still need two more scores after a field goal, so the Redskins have to get a first down. Fourth and three at the 35-yard line. Rippin looking over the Cowboy defensive alignment. And after the short count, looking to the right, lofting it for Monk, who turns around, can't make the catch, but draws the flag. Isaac Holt holding him. Isaac Holt is going to draw the flag, but he could have just let him go, and chances are that yeah, ball would not have been caught. The coverage was there. Pass interference, defense number 30. First down, it's spot of the foul. You're exactly right, Frank. Guy who has consistently drawn the wrath of Jimmy Johnson is Isaac Holt. He's a freewheeler. He's prone to gamble. And that time, the biggest penalty of the game for the Cowboys results in a Washington first down on fourth down. And the ball was there. But Holt was just tied up with Art Monk. There's Kevin Smith, the number one draft pick out of Texas A&M. And a Southwest Conference oh. record. There's Schlereth moving. There's Schlereth moving at right guard, and we'll have another false start on the Redskins. Smith, a uh, number one draft pick, and not brought in just to push Isaac Holt either. False start, offense, number 69, prior to the snap, five-yard penalty, still first down. This is real. I have never seen the Redskin offense. Here's Schlereth right here. Watch him come rocking back out. I mean, just as Rippon is reaching under center. I mean, I, I have never seen the Redskin offense this sloppy and, and unorganized. First and 15 at the 32-yard line. <laughs> Sanders run out of bounds by Norton. That time, Schlereth doesn't even come up out of his stance. 
And Rippon's down, but now up. Yeah, and Jimmy Jones just blows through the line. They are having some kind of a miscommunication. Watch, watch this. I mean, it's like we're not even exploding. We're not even getting back off the ball, and, and Rippon is paying a terrible price. There's Jim Hannafin, the offensive line coach, and it's, it, it's, it's, I don't think it's coaching. It appears to be something between line and quarterback. Here comes yeah. Jones on a blitz on second and 11, and the rookie from East Carolina comes flying through to force that issue. That's blocking. Rippen. That's got nothing to do with the quarterback. That's, that's just not picking up the middle linebacker. Griffin slow getting up again, and nobody even touched Jones coming right up the middle. And Here. Joe Gibbs says, let's regroup. Yep. I want a little time to talk to my quarterback, and I want to regroup. What a nightmare for Jim Hannafin, the line coach. Uh, it's a safety blitz and a middle linebacker blitz. You can only pick up one of them. Bostic elects to pick up Horton, but the closest man comes through untouched. Things are different. The new Pontiac Grand Am proves this. Things are better because no import at its price can match the power of its 16-valve engine and the control of its standard anti-lock brake. Not Accord, not Camry, no one. In fact, consumers I just named Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac Grand Am. A new kind of driving excitement. returning to traditional values. One investment firm never left them. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. Aspen Cologne for men. A compelling new experience for women. Aspen. Now. Top Guns. Dan Marino leads the Miami Dolphins into Cleveland to meet Bernie Kosar and the Browns next week on ABC's Monday Night Football. That picture of Joe Gibbs uh, really said it all, calling for a timeout after an incomplete pass. Just to, just to get regrouped, as Dan said, third and 11 at the 28-yard line. Here come the Cowboys, ripping off balance, throws a prayer, and that's incomplete. Monk looks for the flag, but doesn't get one. Kevin Smith, the rookie, covering on the play. Well, he was jostled around, Al, but that ball was uncatchable, and so it didn't get the flag. But I can understand Joe Gibbs' concern. He's had a quarterback that's only sacked seven times all last year. He's been sacked twice tonight and almost killed on a couple of other occasions. There's the jostling and pushing on the part of the first round draft pick number 26 Kevin Smith but that ball was so far overthrown that wouldn't draw the flag uncatchable fourth and 11 at the 28 under six minutes to go Cowboys up by 13 they have to get to the 17 and Rippon going for it all and that is incomplete out of bounds intended for Gary Clark and not even close Ray Horton there to bust it up uh, he certainly didn't want to intercept it no. because he would have lost about eight yards on him he made the diving attempt for the interception just not quite aware of where he was and maybe caught up in the euphoria what's going on and, and Horton, the Cowboys are busy trouncing the Redskins Horton must have knocked the wind out of himself or even worse he's still down on the ground good coverage the zone once again pays off big for Dallas. In the May 11th issue of Time, we reported what we saw during the riots in South Central Los Angeles. What we saw was the enemy. 
And the enemy was us. All of us. Can we all get along? If it's important to you, you'll find it in time. The new Pontiac Grand Am Sports Sedan proves it. Things are better because this Grand Am offers you the power and performance of a big V6. You'd pay thousands more for a V6 on a Camry, and it's not even an option on an Accord. In fact, Consumer's Digest named Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac Grand Am, a new kind of driving excitement. A refreshingly different beer has come together. Why is that such a bright idea? Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It drinks easy like a light with real draft taste. No wonder. Well, there goes the neighborhood. Yeah. It's attracting such a crowd. Mark Griffin, the last time he played a game in anger, he was the Super Bowl MVP. Tonight, a long night for him. A beautiful night for the Cowboys defensively. They lead 23 to 10. First down from the 27-yard line, and Emmett Smith pans his total up to the 34, making sure he doesn't fumble, covering it with both hands. Tackled by Marshall. You know, you have to give a lot of credit, to, uh, a lot of credit to Dave Wants, that the defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys. He came up with a game plan and a half tonight, and his his guys executed it with with vigor. <laughs> He's in the front row, lower right. As we look at it, almost lost him to the Pittsburgh Steelers yeah. last off season. Former Oklahoma State coach with Jimmy Johnson when he was there, later at USC, and then joined Jimmy Johnson down in Miami and came with him to the Cowboys in '89. Second and four up at the 34 as the clock ticks down. Dallas up by 13 points. Emmett Smith again, picking his way close to a first down. Tackled just past the 38-yard line. Emmett Smith and his Cowboys will next play at the Meadowlands against the Giants next Sunday. And Washington goes home to face Atlanta. And there he is, the first man in the history of the league. With four consecutive games, 100 yards or more rushing against Washington. And Washington is a franchise that's been in existence since 1932. So for the first time in 60 years, it's happened against the Redskins. Tonight, 130 yards for Emmett Smith. First down, the 38-yard line. And a land of that total, picking up about four more. Copeland and others in on the tackle up at the 42-yard line. Well, the question that a lot of people want to know about the Dallas Cowboys, how it will be answered is, is it this year or is it next year? They have come a long way in a short period of time. And Jimmy Johnson doesn't answer the question directly. He says, if we don't do it this year, we, we're just not quite experienced enough. And he went to work on the defense this year using two number one picks to get Kevin Smith, who probably will become a starter. Robert Jones, the middle linebacker, is a starter. And that's where they needed the work. Second and six. And it's Daryl Johnston making the catch, picking up the first down, staying in bounds at the 46-yard line. You can compensate for youth with coaching, with hustle, with attitude, and with players playing above what other people expect them to do. And Jimmy Johnson, love him or hate him, has a track record that excels in all those areas. All his teams have always done the above. Mm -hmm. And the work that he's done since he came to Dallas is nothing short of miraculous. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Aided by the trade of Herschel Walker mm -hmm. for Boku draft choices. Mm -hmm. But and they have turned into good football players. I mentioned earlier, there are eight first-round draft picks on the roster. There's six second-round draft picks on the roster. And they also have eight Plan B players. And they've done a pretty good job in that front office. 
Skins take a timeout here to conserve some time with 231. And also about the Steve Walsh trade as well. They send Walsh over to New Orleans. They get some draft choices in that one. Then they pick up Burline. He's done a beautiful job as the backup. And, you know, it helps clearly to have a, an owner and a coach so in sync because, I mean, Johnson has a tremendous amount of latitude here. Hey, Jerry Jones, when he bought the ball club, people really kind of wondered what was going to happen. They, when he fired Tom Landry and the way he did it unceremoniously, and Landry a bit of a legend here, legend in pro football. Out went Tex Schramm and the Gil Brandt and all the legendary people of the Dallas Cowboys, and, and Jerry Jones then went 1-15 and 15 for the season with Jimmy Johnson, and they really came down on him. But they stuck with it, and as Dan mentioned, the Herschel Walker trade was a big plus, and they have really turned this thing around quickly. More than that, they're filling the stadium. And they're not doing it with mirrors. Mm -hmm. They're doing it with a good football team. Second and nine at the 44-yard line. Here is Emmett Smith again. He picks up three yards here. He now has 139. And I guess the only mystery is whether he'll be the leading ground gainer in the league after tonight. At the moment, Terry Allen of the Vikings with 140 yesterday, including several in overtime, is the leader. Smith, of course, won the rushing championship last year. Timeout again called by Washington with 2.23 remaining. They call enough timeouts. Will Dallas will put it in the end zone again. <laughs> I wonder why Smith is still in there. Again, there is a little short on running backs with the Dallas Cowboys. Kervin Richards with a lacerated kidney. Uh, uh, he probably would be available, but nevertheless, they'd like for him not to be in there, but more than that, the score is 23 to 10. A couple of touchdowns. It could be a Washington Redskins victory. You just don't feel that way about it. Cowboys go to New York, as we say, to face the Giants, then they come home against Phoenix, then they have an open date. And the next time we see Dallas on a Monday night, it is October the 5th at Philadelphia. Hmm. Where they won last year. That ought to be yes. a good game. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Monday, October 5th, Cowboys at Eagles. The first Eagles game a year ago, didn't they sack Corey Aikman 11 times? Mm -hmm. 11 times. Yep. Which is the number of times Indianapolis got the Bernie Kosar. Yes. Third and six at the 41-yard line. Aikman seeking to convert to the 30-yard line, and that should just about wrap it up to Michael Irvin. First down for Dallas. The crowd can now breathe much easier. And all in all, even with a dropped pass or two, a pretty sensational night for Michael Irvin when you consider that the man's had just a couple of practices to get ready for this game. Yes. Two-minute warning as the Cowboys have salted it away. man 
she was a woman to die for. I'm all yours. Virginia Madsen in the real-life Fatal Attraction. A murderous affair. The Carolyn Worma story Sunday. Joe Gibbs simply watching a continuation of preseason tonight. Except it counts tonight. Two minutes to go. His team down by 13. And they could be down by 30. I mean, 23-10 is not an indication of the disparity between these two teams tonight. And Washington. No. Well, Washington's lone touchdown in reality came after a disputed interception by Martin Mayhew. And they no longer can stop the clock. Yep. You just have to watch it. It's going to be a very painful couple of minutes. This was an execution by the Dallas Cowboys. And talent. Talent was growing up. A lot of youngsters out there with another year under their belt. 11 and 5 a year ago, they learned an awful lot. Went up and knocked off Chicago. Lost in the playoffs to Detroit. Came away feeling they could beat anyone on a football field. Michael and Irvin, one of the big reasons. And Michael Irvin can finally do his television show as a member of the team. He did a couple before he even signed. Yeah, James Washington in there as the safety valve and uh, the clock winds down to its conclusion and we conclude the opener of our 23rd season of Monday Night Football. Good to be back guys. Ken Wolf, Craig Janoff heading our crew. Good. Schedule coming up. Yep. Always fun to get it underway. And upstairs as always Malibu Kelly Hayes, George Hill, Steve Hurd, our director of research. Ken Wolf, our producer, directed by Craig Janoff, Joe Chavo, our technical director, Ben Harvey, our associate director, Dick Buffington, Emily Deutsch, halftime producer, Fred King, and Mitch Green, Bob Simon, and the entire gang, Ed uh -huh. and Jim Lakata, and our golf pro, Billy Edwards, on the sideline. Yes, sir. Off and running in year 23, and the Dallas Cowboys are off and running in the NFC East along with the Philadelphia Eagles as the Cowboys are in command tonight and win it by a score of 23 to 10. So a most inglorious beginning to the 1992 season for the Washington Redskins as the Cowboys prevail. We'll see you next week from Cleveland. It's the Browns and the Dolphins. Till then, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. Good night from Irving, Texas. Saturday, join host Michael Jordan for the RMCC Celebrity Golf Championship. Then on ABC's College Football, it's regional action as Syracuse takes on Texas. Tennessee meets Georgia. Oregon and Stamford collide. Missouri challenges Illinois or it's Bowling Green at Ohio State. Now except on the West Coast, stay tuned for your late local news and ABC News Nightline over most of these ABC stations. ABC's NFL Monday.